Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Saturday, and it's six o'clock, and we are live. Hi. Hello, everybody hey. who's watching. As you can see, we have a guest with us today. Me and it's only me and Lou, but we have uh, Drew. I think you prefer to be called, don't you? From yep. Anuk dot com. Now, What's up, guys, we've got a few firsts going on in this show. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself in a, in a minute. Um, we've got a few firsts going on in this show. We are streaming to Hitbox today. We were going to try to stream to YouTube, but unfortunately, we're having a few technical difficulties with it, as always with uh, Resonance Arcade and Twitch, obviously as well. We're also going through a new service um, called Restream.io to stream to these multiple services. So I'm hoping there's not going to be any problems there, but if there are any issues, please let us know uh, in chat and we will do our best to sort them out. So yes, on to our guest. We have, uh, we have, uh, as I said, Drew from anuk.com. Introduce yourself. Tell us a, a little bit about you. Hey guys. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm uh, Drew. Most people know me as Laundrum on the website and on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, I'm the community lead slash community manager slash moderator lead. Hats, 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 hats uh, for uh, for Nook.com, um, which uh, for those of you who don't know uh, is a uh, social site for gamers. Uh, so you can bring in your different live streams, your YouTube videos, blogs, screenshots, all that stuff. Bring it in, share it with folks, meet other people, uh, things of that nature. It's uh, we hate the term, but it's it's similar to a Facebook, but just for gamers. Um, so it cuts out all the crap that you don't want about, you know, other people and adds in, um, you know, all the awesome stuff like streams and videos and stuff like that, uh, to be kind of this hub for, uh, for the, the gamer social scene in, in the, in the, that's the short version. <laughs> well, we're going to, we're going to dig into that a little bit. We're having a, uh, we're doing a bit of a, an experiment. Another first for, for residents arcade is we're going to do an interview. We're going to do a proper interview, hopefully. And me and Lou, are going to grill you on you and on a nuke. First of all, we'll start with a nuke. You've just told us a general overview of, of what it's about. Is there any more detail you can give us like about the, you know, the, the website itself? What kind of things does it offer the gamers or not just gamers? I think it does more than just, it, it cares for more than just gamers, doesn't it? Well, uh, it's primarily for gamers. It's built from the ground up for gamers, but, um, you know, video gamers, you know, you guys know it as, as well as I do. Um, they're not just video game, you know, uh, related. You've got guys who are big into anime. You've got cosplay. You've got, you know, people who do art and not just video game art. They'll go and do their own personal stuff. Uh, and we're happy to support all that stuff. So you can come in. Uh, we, we we do have a My Little Pony uh, group <laughs> that's on the site. Yeah, that, what are they called, then? Up. What are they called, the uh, My Little bronies. Pony group? Are no, no, I know, the bron <laughs> I know they're called Bronies, but what's the group called? Because I, I know a few on oh. Twitter. Oh, good lord, I don't even know. Oh, uh, you can't say the much. name and then not know. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Um, yeah, uh, actually, uh, let's see, here, make me... We, we can move on anyway, we'll, we'll figure yeah, we'll, it out. Yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, so we have a lot of, you know, different communities and stuff like that that are designed for um, giving people an opportunity to, to be video game players, but to have all their other stuff. Um, and to kind of, the, the big thing is the semi anonymity uh because like i'll you know i'll put my own name out there and anybody can find me and google me and stuff like that but for most people it's spiky or septimus um and you know that's how you're known you know around the internet you know for lack of a better uh term oh hey darren um in our chat um and uh you know, so you have this little bit layer of anonymity. So it's it's kind of that whole idea of I'm another person when I'm, you know, gaming and stuff like that. Hmm. And some of that's the, the whole fantasy aspect. You know, I can go and be the, the badass commando and stuff like that or, you know, save the princess. You know, all that stuff. And it kind of filters into that. So you can still have this little bit of a layer of protection between you and who you are in real life. Uh, a lot of that comes from not only, you know, just personal stuff. So you're not, you know talking about your real life uh that's for facebook you know this yeah, is all exactly, for yeah. your video game stuff it also helps for for some of the stuff especially when you talk about like a big guild you might like your whole guild but some members of that guild you probably don't want to be seeing your new family <laughs> photos yeah, or yeah. you know talking about you know your trip to wherever you went on spring break stuff like that so you have this separation where okay 
This I, is just what I want to make available to I'm gamers. On, I'm on the extreme side of that. My Facebook friends are people that I can insult in a in a in a horrible way in the in the most uh, horrific ways in fact so i've got about 40 maybe friends friends on facebook <laughs> i used to have 300 400 and it was all people from the local music scene gamers it was all kinds of people but i don't want that i want facebook to be my personal you know photos of me and my wife that my family and close friends see and that's it and it's i think it's got to that point now with a lot of people i think facebook is is that and it's nice to have somewhere else where where you know as a gamer you can go uh, and, oh, and i like right. the idea the other thing is that, that um, we used to have a community on IRC, um, and we hung out in these kind of these these off the grid communities. Right. And they, they've they've sort of di di dissipated now, and we've gone into the real world, and we now know our friends and our, our parents and stuff on Facebook. And this seems to be coming along at a time where gamers are starting to carve a bit of a, a community back, like into yeah. the yeah. you know the niche. But is appearing again well, so it's really nice to see that that there is somewhere for you to go as a gamer and be a gamer and be around your gamer friends and separate that from the the, the kind of ubiquitous social networks that are facebook and, and even twitter to a ex certain extent see twitter's my game my gaming side well sorry it's my game dev side but you can make twitter what you want it to be that's the difference there in my eyes anyway because it's it's a it's a platform where you sell a product or service or yourself in my eyes mm -hmm. people so you sell yourself on twitter yeah, essentially, I, I pimp myself out. That. He sells his <laughs> services. <laughs> I, I, my, Which is much better. <laughs> definitely. Well, I, I, to be fair, people can people can get whatever they want from me on Twitter. It's a platform for me to talk publicly about anything I want, but I choose personally just to use it for game development stuff and speaking about you know game news i mean we've got a resonance arcade twitter which i literally just tweet out when the shows are on and kind of what we do i don't really follow anyone back on it occasionally i do um, but it's not I, I probably should i probably should spend more time doing that but it's nice again that there's a, another niche that if i wanted a, a gaming persona my spiky persona which is my gaming handle most of the time to go on to a new can you know create a community on there or maybe not create a community for me but create a community for my clan or what else right. so moving up this is moves on to another question i had what is a nuke what is a nook i mean we, we say nook in england but what what is a nook on a nuke <laughs> right i know it, it's the worst isn't it yeah. i know and i and i i work for it yeah uh a a nook on a nook, mm -hmm. uh, there, there are terms for our groups. Uh, so for you know simplica uh, simplification, we'll just call them groups. Um, there are user defined. Uh, we do have uh, different game pages that are set up for each specific game, uh, but the nooks themselves are designed for users uh, to define what they want it to be. So we've got some. Uh, MMO games. I'll give them a little bit of a shout out. They're, uh, they're a website that does articles and stuff like that, and they have their Nook, and it's it's just posting their various articles and stuff like that, and sharing that. And they've done a couple different giveaways, and it's their uh, their their little reach out uh, into a Nook from their website to share all their content. But then you've got others, um, Aloha Wendy. Uh, she's got her uh, her guild White Star, which is a uh, their multi. Um, Multi, uh, multi game for yeah, multi platform, multi game, yeah, whatever. Multi -game, so yeah. they've got WildStar, ESO, uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, I think they've got you know five or six different uh, games that they all play. But rather than using one we you know one website for this one and one website for this one, they're all together on this White Star Nook, and then they've got little sub forums and stuff like that but all the content that they share is cross game so even though they're all in different guilds for different game uh for different games they're all seeing the same content so it promotes that whole uh you know even though well i don't know you from my game but we can still interact and talk about oh here that's a great you know that's a great screenshot or oh that's a really cool item that you got and stuff like that that breaks it out from just being one single game See, I remember back in the day, back in the day, back when clans <laughs> were a big thing, and IRC, right. you know, as, as Lewis mentioned, was a big thing. We used to have um, every clan was essentially for a, a single game, and it became it came to a point where we had big clans like Four Kings um, or was Spooks, I think, was another another quick clan that appeared, and they that we even had to a point where 
certain clans only did certain mods in certain games. So our right. clan, our clan, uh, C- secret was that? Did I call them secret? No, secret quake special service. quake services. Whatever oh, it was, yeah. it was terrible. <laughs> it was. I think I was twelve when I came up with the name, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what, what uh, our clan was a Rocket Arena Two clan, and then there was other Rocket Arena Two clans that occasionally they'd, they'd you know they'd go into a bit of DM or capture the flag, or but none of them ever did very well in the other places. And then right, the big, they had their yeah, and then the big clans like Four Kings, Spooks, uh, and a, a number of others they came in and they they started doing it almost semi-professionally to a point where we thought we were semi-professional because we did leagues, you know, we we were cool, but. These guys did it to another level. They had sponsorship. They, you know, they had humongous IRC channels that had hundreds of thousands, well, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds of people in them. And yeah. they, they, whenever you went in there, you had to be special to get voice, so you couldn't speak unless you, you know, they, you know. And and then they had individual channels for all the different clans. So it sounds like a nuke is kind of a a for, like a well a, a web based version of that essentially isn't it it's yeah an evolution of IRC yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's not a bad analogy uh, because yeah you can set up uh, for instance using a game page say World of Warcraft if you post something on the World of Warcraft page which is basically any time you post something World of Warcraft related that goes out into the ether to the several thousand people that follow World of Warcraft and it's just going to show up on the game page but if somebody's actually following you, that ends up on their own specific feed. Uh, and so basically you can say, well, I like Spikey, but Septimus, no, he, we're just going to, we're just going to leave Lou it's over. Generally the case. It's <laughs> generally the way right. things go. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave Lou over there and I like his stuff, but I don't need to follow it. And, uh, so you can, you know, decide who shows up on your feed specifically, what games show up on your feed specifically. And then if you want to see something else, you can go to a related nook or a related game page or to the person's actual profile. And so you can kind of pick and choose and stuff like that uh, in terms of, you know, for, for a general user as, a, as opposed to, like, content creators. Right. So what's an identity then? Is that an individual's account? Is that how that works? Is that, and that, so- oh, yeah. Um, basically, you have your nook profile, which is your your account but then we have various uh, gaming identities that we've uh, we've worked to develop and these we've uh, worked with game developers and sometimes third parties to basically add in various um, uh, information from various apis so we've got uh, battlefield 3 no not battlefield 4 yet sorry guys uh, <laughs> counter-strike diablo 3 heroes of new earth league of legends planet side 2 uh, Smite, StarCraft 2, Team Fortress 2, World of Tanks, and World of Warcraft. So all those uh, are just the first ones. We're not done. Uh, those are ones where you can basically add uh, your gaming uh, account to it um, to actually have, you know, here's my World of Warcraft character, here's my favorite Diablo character, here's my stats for uh, Counter-Strike, here's my stats for League of Legends, all these different things ah. that people might know you from. So that's what an identity is. So you, as a, as a user, I can have multiple identities, and each one of them are aliases within different games. Right, and could that you, way... Could you have multiple identities per game? Yeah, um, I actually have, like, yeah, just looking at my profile alone, I have three different Diablo characters, my StarCraft 2 one, my League of Legends one, uh, though we do have people who, like, oh, here's my League of Legends actual account, here's my, uh, what do they call them? Oh, mine. Uh, I don't play League of Legends, little, so... The little blue guys. Uh, oh, um... Smurfs. Uh, this is my Smurf account. See, there we go. Um, you know, and that, you know, so you've got all your different uh, accounts in, you know, or here's my North American account, here's my EU West account. So and all those can be set up. How I mean, apart from obviously the admins, I mean the admins can see identities that are linked into a particular user's account. But say for example, I had um, Spikey as my main one. Everybody knows that Spikey is Chris Seabock, for example. Mm-hmm. But what if I wanted to go on as a, another another pseudonym, and I wanted to use, I wanted to, you know, a, apply that to my account? Does is there is there a way? You said there was a non anonymity, not that word uh, is. Is there a way for me to assign that to my account and then maybe go, you know, I don't know. I, it sounds a bit daft, this, but some people don't <laughs> want all of their identities to be identified as them themselves. Can you do that right. with one of those? Uh, yeah. Uh, now, we only limit, uh, we, we do limit, like, one account per person where possible. That way, that kind of cuts down on trolling and spam and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. Uh, but, yeah, you can easily just say, well, I only want this League of Legends account, for instance, to, to show, but I don't want people to know that I actually have this account and I'm actually semi-pro and stuff like that. I, I don't want people to know about that. That's fine. So you don't add that one. 
Right. Uh, same thing with your characters, you know, all that stuff. So you you have control of what uh, what information. Um, it doesn't just pull everything down no, no, and I, I, shove it in there. Also, oh, so does that mean that the identities actually link in? So when you were talking about Battlefield 4 not yet being available, <clears throat> it's your developers that that develop an API that connects to, uh, well, was it Battle.net yeah. or whatever it's called for Diablo 3, for example? Um, right. They connect to that we and then pull, to the, their, pull the data back. their API, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you're actually logging in with your character and stuff like that. Uh, and you say this specific character on this server, and you know it, you know finds that information and pulls it down. Uh, and we do actually restrict. So if somebody says, "Oh yeah, here's my," you know, we've we've had it a couple times. People have tried to post their League of Legends account, and they'll put up some pro gamers account, <laughs> and somebody sees that and they're like, "Yeah, I don't think that's so and so." And I'm looking at that and I'm like. No, I'm pretty sure if a pro gamer was on, on the site, I would have been alerted. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, let me let me go remove that and send him a message about, you know, impersonation and stuff like that. It's like, that that's nice that you want to be him, but you're not him. You're not so, allowed to do that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, um, you mentioned that you're the community manager and you wear a lot of different hats then. What is your, yep. what is, what is your role? Did you form a nuke? Initially, oh, no. Uh, don't blame it on me. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, uh, David uh, is our uh, our developer and, and president day and the man. Uh, and basically, he's the he's the guy who got the uh, the website started back in uh, for the March 2012. Uh, it was kind of when we went live, and I actually joined up in August as uh, just community intern yeah let me just help out and you know i i'll be honest i joined the site and i was like oh this probably isn't gonna go anywhere but you know what i'll join in and get you know some some experience with community development and about a month in i'm like this is the best site <laughs> ever uh and so i've been kind of i've been in since then and i've been i uh, i got bumped from intern to community lead Sometime in like August or something like that. So do you do you head up the community the community stuff then? Uh... Yeah, uh, I do um, now because um, we're ad free, don't have any sponsorships and stuff like that. Uh, everything is pro bono; uh, it's unpaid work right now, um, and we're fine with that. Um, mm. So we also have a very small team, uh, by which I mean myself and David. And then whoever is willing to volunteer, we've got our moderators and stuff like that that always help out. Uh, and, uh, you know, but th there isn't any paid workers okay. uh, and stuff like that. That was one of my uh, my other questions to see, how, you know, how, how professional it is. And I'm assuming you all have real jobs, you know, real life jobs. That you, and this is uh, something that you do in your spare time from, from love and passion. For now, yeah. yeah. yeah well, for no, now. I, we're, uh, we're all in the same boat. As an indie developer, right. that's exactly what I am. I have, I've got a, a full-time job, you know, and I have to I have to do that to have food on the table, but I want to be an indie developer, you know. I'd, I want to do Resonance Arcade full-time, but it, it's, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Yep. Okay, um, so how many users then now do you have on? Well, see, uh, that, and that is that is the the magical line. Anytime I end up talking with people, they're like, "How many users do you have?" I'm like, "I, I ain't telling you. Sorry." Oh, uh, you're not we, telling we, us. Okay. We we don't. Uh, now that said, uh, there are some some stats that you know we like to throw around and that we're proud of and stuff like that. But for instance, League of Legends uh, actually has thirty thousand followers. To give you an idea, uh, and that not every single person on a nook follows League of Legends. Mm. Uh, World of Warcraft is the other big one, um, and that's got you know eight thousand users and stuff like that. So depending on the game, you know we've got various different size audiences, but overall, um, it's much bigger than just the League of Legends crowd. We'll go with that. Okay. Uh, but at the end of the day, we don't want to be like. Twitter or Facebook where they're like, oh, hey, we broke a million and a half users. Cool. So I'm just another number, you know, um, and, and that's one of the things that we try and avoid. Okay. It's also the reason we don't make our own content. Uh, we would rather promote content from Resonance Arcade or, you know, any other YouTuber and stuff like that. So, so you, don't, you don't have your own YouTube channel or anything like that. You'd, you'd, you'd literally just do this. You, you speak to people on Twitter, you speak to people on social platforms, come on to yep. shows like this, and that's that's your way of, of advertising, essentially. Yeah, um, now I'm going to start getting a, uh, a regular weekend stream just to, to hang out with the community and chat and stuff like that. But yeah, it won't, cool. def I mean, it's going to be me, so there's no, not going to be anything professional about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be, you know, something just because, 
you know, at the end of the day, we're all gamers and we want to hang out. And so we want to bring in some folks and, you know, hey, let's go play a game kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting for Lou to jump in here some at some would, point and ask some <laughs> questions, but uh, he's I've not. Been, I've, had, I've had questions on my mind that have been answered as I've been. I know, you're, 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 very, you're a very good in, uh, interviewee, I have to say. Terrific. Uh, true. <laughs> Um, so you've talked about the APIs that you, your developer, is writing, or your developers are writing to all of the different accounts. But in terms of an API in, because we're, we're quite technically focused on this show quite a lot, in terms of an API in to a nuke, a nook, a nook how, how, how do you a say nook. Uh, I, I'm, I, I say, say I say, even in England, I say things different from everybody else. So uh, a nook then. Um, so have you got an API that a developer like myself can interact with? Yeah, we've actually just released an API. You are not going to be able to do uh, as much stuff with it as you are hoping to. Uh, okay. We just kicked it out the door uh, last week, I think. Oh. Um, and it's it's very basic stuff that lets you pull down some information. So you can basically put in your user profile and you can show these are how many followers I have. This is the, the fame points uh, that I have for these couple games, so your top games and stuff like that. Uh, eventually it's going to grow, uh, but again, we, we basically have one developer, so he basically created the API, um, and you know we pushed it out the door, and it's like, okay, let's go see what people do with it and what they want from it. Um, I've already had numerous bloggers who say, hey, this is really cool. When can I use it to post from WordPress over to a Nook? And, you know, that things is like that. my question. Now, the reason I ask, I was asking that um, is I've been interested in a Nook since I heard about it uh, from MMO Buff. You're on a, a show that I used to do, well, on another show on that show, if that makes sense. Right. <laughs> and um, uh, with, with, uh, with one of our mutual friends, Josie. Josie. Um, I, I would be interested in using a, a, a Nook but I would I I don't have the time to spend time on Facebook, Twitter, uh, all all of the so, all of the social networks. I mean, Twitter is my primary platform because I get the most out of it personally. But right. I don't still don't use it that much, really. Not in comparison to a lot of other people, anyway. Mm -hmm. What it, it, is there? Is there going to be some way that that we could aggregate data uh, to to a nook uh, in a in a cohesive manner that would allow us to at least pay attention to because that's the important thing here isn't it paying attention to the people who are following you on a nook well uh actually that's uh one of the things that we want to do with a nook uh early early on we had a lot of complaints oh joy another social media that's that's just what we need another social site and our response was yeah you're right that would be sucky if we were just another social site so we actually uh pull in or actually right now we don't pull in um information but we do send it out so you can actually use a nook to actually post to twitter uh which uh and there's other programs that are out there like that uh who says and a couple of those that'll uh twit longer that allow you to do you know longer posts and then when it goes longer than the 140 characters it you know just trims off the end and gives a link to it a nook does the same um but you can also do uh stuff like sharing videos um so like after you guys upload this to to youtube and I actually upload it to a Nook, click the little share on Twitter button, and it automatically posts it, posts it to Twitter for you. So um, we do understand that, you know, gamers and, you know, content creators especially, well, I have X amount of time and I have, you know, th this much amount of work to do. Uh, and so we want to actually make it so it's, a Nook is not just a social site, it's actually a tool that people can actually use to, to promote their own stuff, to actually help Twitter to hit. Um, you know, any other social media that's out there. And because we want a Nook to not just be a social site, but to be the social hub, the center that everything can, you know, link into and stuff like that. And we know we're not going to become the, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the big center of gaming, but we want to have connections and we want to be partnered up with everybody that we can that's actually interested in community in video games and and actually being a positive community as opposed to uh some of the you know hives of scum and villainy yeah. <laughs> that are out there <laughs> yeah i mean i'm i'm very very i'm i've always been interested in the community aspect of things uh, from you know from my early quick days all the way now to to game development and residence arcade we've I've got generally people that follow me personally and kind of follow me around onto the different things, but it's not it's not really about me to me. It's about what I'm creating. It's what I'm it's what I'm interested in getting out there and giving to other people. 
and right. it's interesting to it's interesting to know that the that that I still have I think I signed up a while back for a knock I, I, I think I did but I didn't do much with it and I have to apologize for that because it does sound <laughs> very interesting and sounds like it would be useful maybe I should give it more time but the time I have I'm switching right. between all these different things and I don't know sell it, sell it to, I mean you've already sold it to me but sell it to <laughs> like the new people who come in come in into the chat and listening and what what if they're busy what can they, what what's the minimum that they could do i suppose for uh, to get into a nook uh sure uh <laughs> in the 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 okay. uh the the quick rundown is um i mean i'm i'm the community manager i can basically check up on all the content that's been posted by the people i follow in probably 5 minutes uh because as opposed to say twitter uh where you see somebody posted something interesting, you click on it, and oh, look at all these replies. You scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, with a nook, it's like, boom, here's this comment. Oh, hey, look, it's got some some comments, but uh, I don't really care. Scroll on, or open them and read them, you know? Um, but because uh, Twitter is super, super time sensitive, you know, if you don't check Twitter for an hour, mm -hmm. You know, it just goes and goes and goes and you're gone. Uh, Note tends to be a little bit slower paced because uh, instead of needing all the different posts, they're all tanned under one actual, uh, the original post and everything else is comments. Uh, and so it, you can actually scroll through and check all your stuff real quick. Uh, it also cuts down a lot on um, some of the spam that you'll get. You'll have, oh, so-and-so posted this. And then you have seven other people also posting links to it because, oh, it's this big thing. You know, um, Terry Pratchett died. Yeah. Terrible thing. But now you have 12 different people posting about it. But if, you know, it's on a nook, the first person to post on it, everybody's going to comment on it. How does that work then? Because uh, at the moment, I, I could post a tweet, for example, and then I can retweet that tweet, and I may mm -hmm. get a spam or not. I mean, I use TweetDeck, so I turn off retweets. I can't see uh, retweets on some of my columns, at least. But on a nook, if I posted, if two people posted different links to different articles about Terry Pratchett, for example? Mm -hmm. How would that those will, work? Those, will still, uh, those, those would both still exist. They, they wouldn't like cancel each other out or anything okay. like that. But because of the uh, the function to it, um, it as soon as it, it, within the, the clicks of, of people following each other and stuff like that, all it takes is one person to post it, and then, oh, so-and-so posted it. Okay. You know, it's covered. And, you know, uh, in, in terms of video game related, like if I post about World of Warcraft's new patch notes and I post a link to it, somebody else goes to the World of Warcraft page to post that same thing and they're going to see the link there. You know, uh, so it ends up cutting down a lot on spam and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also because you're only seeing this stuff from the people that you follow. Uh, as opposed to, you know, on Twitter, you're going to see all the stuff that from people that you follow and all the stuff that they retweet and or uh, I love Twitter does it now where, oh, so and so follows this person and they said something. There's no retweet. There's no favorite. It's just like, no, you're going to see this now. Uh, so it cuts down on a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and my Twitter actually sends me notifications that when someone is following someone that I don't even know. It's like, hey, you should follow this person. Yeah, like, like, I, huh? I don't follow I, them. I don't get a notification I? for that, that. It does that because you don't have that many followers. I don't get any of that stuff because I've got quite a lot of followers and I follow quite a lot of people. I'm actively engaged in it. That's a marketing technique. That's all it is. They're just saying, come mm -hmm. back on Twitter. Come and use us. It's really important. Yeah. It's not. So, actually, <laughs> now that you say that, we, we have an update for, for a nook that's actually going to be uh, along this side. Though, um, that actually is uh, what, what we're going to be adding is basically it'll uh, notice that hey you guys follow each other on Twitter why don't you follow each other on a nook mm, so it's just it's, it's bridging those connections and stuff like that or um, and it's only going to be it's it's a one time thing kind of thing where it's like hey you both exist on the on the site and you haven't talked to each other why not and it just fires that out and steps back you know and, and so it's not going to be a repeated like oh it's follow suggested you know see with all, the, all the apis that are out there this stuff is possible and this is the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that goes on in my head so just as we were talking about uh, web links then my head just went oh i just thought of a really good idea for twitter <laughs> or for you know like, but it's it's all pie in the sky unless you've got the time and the the dedication right. to do it you know i have so many ideas that i want to i want to approach but i can't because i don't have any mm -hmm. time to do it right so okay, do you so, feel? Do, do you feel? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, do you feel that this is um, this is this is basically going to be something which can um, can augment or replace, like for instance, Steam Community? Um, they launched that, and really, I don't use it that much. I thought I would because that's where all my games are. That's where all my friends are. In actual fact, it, it, it encroaches on your life very little. You don't tend mm -hmm. to look at it. And it's almost like it's superfluous to the Steam experience. Your Steam experience is about, there's all your games, the there's game. your friends who you can play with the games with now. But the, the whole screenshots, community review stuff doesn't seem to really work on Steam. Whereas it looks like having somewhere dedicated for it where you actually go and sign up and, and, and you know take an active role in it, that is much more it's much more my kind of thing really that would be something that i would be interested in doing but do you think yeah. that that's that's the approach that you're taking with that then yeah because we're not connected up with using the actual you know steam was video games first and it was all about having access to your video games and then they did the community thing and then they didn't do anything with it uh, as far as i know moderation is up to the game developer because you know game developers they have all sorts of time you know, to be monitoring not only their own forums, but then the Steam forums as well. And it's just unnecessary. Uh, it's one of the, the I mean, we, we basically kind of have these three pillars for, for a Nook. And, you know, we want it for the actual users, the gamers, then content creators. But then we also have stuff for the game developers. So, you know, we've got uh, a few game developers that are that are on the site and that are, uh, that are using it, mostly indie guys. Um, but, you know, the idea is eventually... Why bother setting up uh, your own forums when you can just use a Nook? Uh, you know, we you know we provide moderators, and the moderators are all community members who are big into the community, that are positive about the community, and stuff like that, um, and that are actively looking to you know engage in the community as opposed to Steam, where it's just I'll be honest. It's the vocal minority of people who are raging and complaining and stuff like that. That's any public place like that where it's just forums. That's just going to be people who want to rant and rave. If they want to actually provide something, if they want to do something, they're going to be on YouTube. They're going to be on Twitch. They're going to be on Hitbox. They're going to be on any of those sites that actually create things and promote things. Anything that's just forum related is go you're going to have that tiny little group that are like, hey, check out this cool picture I posted. And then everybody else is going to be, you nerfed rogues. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> mm. So how is, is that a big concern then with this? Because obviously the gamer community is full of <laughs> less than pleasant people, should we say. There's yep. a lot of people on there, a lot of trolls on there who really just want to upset things for everyone. And obviously that's going to be a big concern for anyone starting out with a new gaming community. What kind of things have, have you been doing to kind of mitigate that? Um, actually, we have a pretty badass community. Uh, I'm super proud of every single one of our users. And I know that sounds really weird saying that I'm proud of users, but um, we, we have functions to, we, we do have an ignore function. Um, and it literally, there, there's no message sent back to the person. It's just literally, boom, you're ignored. I never see your posts. I never see your comments. Uh, you can PM me all you want. I'll never see them because nice. it's literally just an ignore feature. It's not a block or anything like that. Um, if, if, if it needs to go beyond that, you report them, and then I will step in and handle shit. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, it's like, this guy is just a troll, and I don't like him, and I never want to see his stuff again. Boom, ignore, done. So that helps, number one. Uh, number two, we have a upvote, downvote system. Uh, the, the difference is, uh, and to compare it to the other website that does upvotes and downvotes, uh, upvoting in Anook will automatically share that content. Uh, it would be similar to a retweet on Twitter. So if somebody posts some cool new stuff for World of Warcraft, for instance, and you're like, oh, that's cool, and you hit, ah, I like that, it's a little hard. Uh, it automatically uh, shares that content to all the people who follow you, but only if they follow World of Warcraft. So it cuts down on, so you're not spamming people, you know, all the all the big EverQuest fans that like, That's you know. Really cool. Yeah, that is a yeah, nice way of filtering things because there's so much, there's so many people on Twitter that I really am interested in, but they, they, they've got agendas that I'm not interested in. You know, if I, let's take, for example, uh, I really care about a lot of the game developers out there and I really want to hear about what they're doing with their game. 
that, tell me if I'm understanding this right when I when I say this. I really care about what they do with their game and anything they do with technology or anything like that. But there are a lot of them that also have uh, stuff about Gamergate, for example, that I'm not interested in. I don't care about the, you know the, mm -hmm. the, the that particular subject on Twitter. Uh, they'll, they'll talk about you know there'll be there a number of developers on there that are, are quite heavy into feminism, and it's not that I'm. I don't want to hear about the feminism part. It's that it's that the way that some of those users present themselves, I'm not interested in. So I'd like to be able to stop that if possible, mm -hmm. but still follow them. But I end up unfollowing people because the, the you know the the posts that I'm not interested in outweigh the posts I right. am interested in. Is that is that am I understanding that right? Can you do that kind of thing? Yes, but only within games. Okay. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before the stream. We don't get into the political stuff, okay. um, you know. So we're not going to have. You can't categorize something with, oh, this is about Gamergate. Uh, so there's there's no way to, to ignore stuff. But specifically within games, yeah. Uh, so you can basically say, hey, yeah, I really like this guy. He's really funny. Does great videos, um, and I love his World of Warcraft stuff, and I love his League of Legends. But I hate Dota. I really don't like yeah. Dota. So you, if you're not following Dota, you don't see his Dota stuff. That, that, yeah, that's, so I understand that. Right. That's that's kind of what. Yeah. We're... Uh, just and uh, comb that combined with um, the downvote system for dealing with trolls and you know people who get overly excessively uh, involved in <laughs> content, mm -hmm. you, ju you just click that little downvote. And the cool thing is, if enough people agree with you and actually force the post into the negative, it disappears off the game page. Um, now that isn't to say it's been deleted. Uh, anybody who follows them, they'll still see it. It's still on their feed. It's still on their profile. All that stuff. It's still there. But the game page, the, the the front page of a game, no, it's gone. Poof, done. It's, nice. uh, it's really funny because like a lot of my work used to be, oh, I have to go delete some gold seller, you know, spamming stuff again. Yeah, well, yeah. Now, now my users just go gold seller downvote, yeah. and it's done. My work's done here. <laughs> I can walk away. I'm good. That's um, really nice. So, oh, it's amazing. Um, once the game, uh, once users realize a that on a nook that kind of uh, spam doesn't that isn't tolerated. Um, cursing? Curse to your heart's content, but don't insult somebody. You know, Don't call them names, don't use some of the, the various racial and uh, sexist epithets. Don't use it, and, and we'll all get along just fine. You, you want to scream in rage that you were so close, 1% wipe, you know, or, you know, my pentakill was stolen. That's cool. Rage all you want, curse all you want, but don't make it personal, don't attack somebody. We actually had a guy who came in and he just ran in Raven, didn't like something, something had happened, and was just throwing language around. And somebody had linked it to me. I was like, okay, I'll have to handle that when I get home. I got home, checked the link, and it had been buried, downvoted into oblivion. So <laughs> it was never going to be on the game page. And every single comment was like, it, nobody fought him. They're just like, God, man, why do you have to use that language? Let's not use that language here. Come on, man. You know, and it's the, I mean, the the catchphrase, the tagline for Anouk is welcome home gamer. Because mm. it, it's the same thing. Are you going to go into your mama's house and use those words? <laughs> you know, uh, is that the, the kind of content that you want to throw around where your kid is your nieces and stuff like that? So let's keep it clean-ish. We're, we're gamers at the end of the day. We're all going to be, you know, yelling and screaming and stuff like that. But let's keep it focused, you know, and, and clean. Um, and, yeah, a lot of they just jumped in and they piled the guy into the ground. It's nice and they're all semi-polite about it. And afterwards, you know, he posted a comment. Oh, sorry, guys. I just had a bad day. And somebody literally said, yeah, I get that. You want to go do duos on League? <laughs> and I was just like. <laughs> My work here is done. Why do you need me? You guys have this. Where handle. all these gamers come from? I yeah, know. that, that um, doesn't happen in the real gaming world, <laughs> surely. Uh, <laughs> and I, I swear to, and it was just one of those things. I mean, now I don't see that kind of situation happen a ton on Anuk, but it just happened <laughs> once, and I was just like, okay, cool. You know, they they got it. They they, yeah. they have figured out how how Anuk needs to work and stuff like that. And so the whole positive community thing, because that's that's our big thing, you know. You share your content all day. Uh, your your content might be crap. You might not know how to edit, but that's cool. Post it, and nobody is going to rant and rave at you about how terrible it is. They might s give you suggestions on you know how to make it better. They might downvote you because it's bad content and they they don't want to see it on the homepage. Cool, but you're not going to get deleted for bad content. People aren't going to rage at you for bad content, and if they do, 
you downvote their comment, you report them, you ignore them. I tell you, you know, what. I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to. I'm going to either me or Lou is going to sign up to. <laughs> I've already signed. Have you? Good. Oh, okay. Look at Lou. Oh, well. Have you signed up to uh, as Resident Arcade or as yourself? No, or myself. It would be yourself, yeah, and then. Yep. Right. Okay. So I'll do the same, and we'll we'll both use it, and we'll we'll set up a a nook for Resident Arcade. We'll post this video, and see see how it goes, and see how you know, see what kind of yeah. response we get. Because it sounds like it, it really does sound good. It. You know what the problem is? It's it's fear of the unknown. And it's fear mm -hmm. of the fact that it may be another, sorry to use the term, but it may be another time waster, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. that's the problem. But the thing is, we are totally focused on games on this show. We do occasionally talk about some technical, um, um, you know, like gadgets and tech stuff, but it's mostly games, game development, gaming, you know, gaming communities, anything, that, anything to do with games. And that's what we're interested in. So it sounds like it may be right up our street. I have to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. Um, and honestly, if you play video games, even, you know, casually, there's no reason at least not to, you know, poke your head in on the nook, you know, see what's going on. Um, it's amazing some of the people that I've found and met uh, just because, the, you know, and for a lot of them, it's, uh, I mean, you guys included, a lot of people, until they go viral, they just slowly build mm. that following and they're always building slowly. And until something goes viral, they never had that sun surge of popularity and there's been so many people I'm like how are you not more popular you know great editing great content you know had great personality and stuff like that I'm like how have you not blown up um, it's, it, this was a lot of I mean I I never intended this to go crazy or anything like that we've got a steady following you know we're, we're the people that come in regularly on the show they're all very nice and we have a good little community going on but it is that it's little it's very little if it got big I don't know what would happen. I have to be honest. It's, it's not really something we thought about that much, um, but no, it's it's really nice to hear this, and I'm 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 very very interested in it, and I genuinely will for Resonance Arcade at the very least sign up. Yeah. When I was talk when we were talking before, I was talking about the uh, the Nighting Stone Ninjas uh, development studio that I run, and I wasn't sure if it was appropriate because it is it, the community part is important, but it's at the moment there's so much work involved in getting the games together that it's. Mm -hmm. It's very much the back burner, you know, and I'm not sure if it was important, but this is all about community, so yeah, interesting. Um, and you know, I, talking indie development, that's you know one of the reasons why we've got a Nook set up the way we do. Uh, we we actually have an indie Nook to help promote, you know, for both content creators, uh, gamers, and then developers themselves. We have a Nook set up for indie devs, you know, to like, hey guys, check this out, or here's concept art, or guys, I just played this game, you've got to check this out. Uh, one of my one of my buddies, I played D and D with him, um, and we we were talking and stuff like that, and he does music for indie devs, uh, and he was talking about uh, the game, oh, Sproggy Wood, um, not a huge game, but it's on Steam and stuff like that. Go check it out; it's cool. Uh, but uh, specifically, you know, I was like, oh, that's cool, and I got a chance to play it, and uh, two three weeks later, somebody had actually posted their their YouTube video reviewing it on the indie nook and i was like it has finally happened <laughs> there's a there's a post on my site about a game and i know the developer and it's just <laughs> like this, this is you know and so we have that stuff and you know a lot of it is for indie developers to make it a little bit easier for i mean again we go back to you have this amount of work and that much time you know and so we want to try and make it a lot easier to be able to post stuff, you know, and and generate hype, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know, and to actually get people excited and interested in interacting, as opposed to some place like on, you know, Steam. You know, we were talking about Steam community for green light, upvote, downvote. That's about all you get. And it's all very anonymous, isn't it? Really, right. I mean, every, uh, I mean, you know, you said that there is that element in our nook, but it doesn't feel like anyone's following me on Steam or, or care mm -hmm. about. I mean, it's right. I'm, it, I'm just a gamer on there. I'm just someone who's got 200 games and plays them occasionally. You know, that's all I am. Yeah. That's, um, that's the way I feel about the community as well. It, it really doesn't feel like a community on Steam. It feels like 
I don't know what it feels like, but it doesn't feel like anything, really. I, I, guess I, I, find right. it, I find it very strange when someone sends me a message, I have to be honest with you. And it I does just saw a message from 2010, which I've not seen before, which shows how much <laughs> attention I've paid to Wait, it. Wait, like actual messages on well, Steam? Well, yeah, yeah. something that someone posted. I didn't even know you could do that. You can post on people's profiles. <laughs> you know? I didn't know that. I, I only know because... I, 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 knew about the, I knew about the commenting on profiles, but I, I hadn't realized you could send, like, a PM Oh, yeah, that's, stuff been, like that. that's been around for years, that. That's, uh... Like... Like I, in messaging, I know, you know, and the the the, the messaging. No, that's, the that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sorry, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking about like I have an inbox somewhere, and there I was is, like, there really? is. A- there is an inbox, but I think it's all. Every time I say it's got, I've got three new messages. I've got three new cards from playing a game oh, or something. Yeah. I don't get. I'm not into any of that stuff. Yeah. But. <laughs> right. So, um, last question about Anuk before we move on to uh, the rest of the content of the show. Sure. Um, what is your most awkward user experience? <laughs> As the community manager, what is? I know this is a bit of a funny one because you don't want to talk about anything negative, but I want to know what's. Don't you don't have to name any names, but just give us an anecdote if you have. No, the worst part is immediately jumping to mind. I'm like, oh no, I know what story I'm going to tell. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we had this lovely gentleman who decided that he was going to make multiple accounts repeatedly, which is a it's a no no. You're not supposed to do that. So I was trying to communicate with him. I was like, "All right, dude, you gotta, you gotta tell me what's going on. Why do you keep making? Well, I keep forgetting the password." Ah. Uh. A. Okay, well, you know, refresh password via email. Well, I don't actually have an email. Okay. Well, in that case, and, and at this point, I'm starting to realize, he, is he like, is he like eight? What's going on here? (laughs) You know, and it's like, okay, well, we've got to shut your accounts down. You need to set up a web, you know, an email. I gave him a link to Gmail. Go make him, go make an email. We'll set you up. (laughs) And he's like, and didn't want to do that. And I was like, okay, I've given up. I've given him his venture. And I just deleted all his extraneous accounts. And then as I'm looking through them, I realize he sent private messages to other people. And he's got a lot more accounts than I realized. And he's got accounts as females. Uh, and I'm like, oh no, please no, and check some of the PMs. And yes, he's PM'd various other people. Do you want to be my girlfriend? I'm like, no. Oh no. <laughs> so uh, fortunately, everybody just they all handled it very well, and you know most people just ignored him. And it was just like, all right, yeah, delete, 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 delete. All of this is dead. Delete it all. <laughs> I sent him a PM. I was like, dude, we want every single user. To, to like a nook and to be part of a nook and to be part of this community, but you got to get a you got to get a working email and a working password and and stick to bye. the one account. Yeah, yeah, it's just like oh, so bad. And I just like I'm like oh man, what happened? As a so I, I was I took over a forum uh, many years ago, a local band forum uh, where in the town I live in, and it was it was absolutely full of highly offensive material and it was it was supposed to be about music you know this band and it was full of that and it was full of duplicate accounts everybody had at least 10 accounts and the occasion you know they'd log in and log off while they were having a single conversation in a thread and they'd be posting all these different like serial killers and stuff it might be a little bit you know it's it all right i understand the in jokes and the you know the fact that it can be a bit funny but as a as a manager as someone who needed to control that and you know implement certain rules such as don't pay, post pictures of dead things and you know that kind of, it's not right. it's not appropriate I, I completely understand where you're coming from and uh it, it took me a long time to get to a point where it was acceptable you know the, mm-hmm. the this thing there right so we're going to move on to some questions uh, personal questions now to you okay now i'm going to pick a few we've got a big list of them um I'll let Lou pick one first out of this if he's got anything that he, oh, he wants. Well, I'm going to go for the first one because that's the one I'm most interested in, actually. Okay. So, what is your favorite game of all time? Chrono Trigger. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there, there is no question that, I mean, that, it, it, you know, it's a question that comes up fairly often. I, I've had a long time to think over it, and it's like, yeah, that is the game that I would probably go back and play. And I do. Um, it, it, for those of you not familiar with Chrono Trigger, it's an old SNES game. Uh, and it, it's one of the first games that had New Game Plus. So you'd finish the game, you could restart again with all your gear, with all your high-level characters and stuff like that. And so you got this almost an achievement. And it's just like, let's keep going. And it, like I've got, uh, I've got it on my Vita, wherever it went. Uh, it's the PlayStation version of it. 
and I, I'm dead set on getting every character to 99, and it's going to take forever. You know, what uh, but I will get there. I'm into my I'm into my retro games. I've got a, a SNES. We've got a, a PAL version of the SNES um, downstairs. I can't get hold of Chrono Trigger. Um, I've no. never played it. I've never played it. I, it is oh, amazing. No. It's a beautiful game. It's it basically I would say it's better than the equivalent of Final Fantasy on the SNES. I think it was Final Fantasy well, six, six or four. Yeah. Six well, because games. it was the, it was the perfect storm. You had. Um, Character designer from Dragon Quest slash Dragon Ball Z. You had um, the music and writer from Final Fantasy. Uh, no, the the music from Final Fantasy. The writer yeah. from Dragon Warrior. And it was all these guys who all at the, at one time they didn't have a project that they were all working on. They didn't have anything coming up, and they were all working at Square Enix all at the same time. And Square Enix said, "Here, go make a game," and they made this masterpiece. <laughs> I uh, I really 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 want to play it. Uh, I settled for Secret of Mana uh, when I last did my um, bit of you know my SNES retro kind of buying on eBay, and I think I paid like forty or fifty quid for it. it oh yeah, ridiculous. it's up there for any of those old school SNES but games. I don't even think there's a PAL version of uh, SNES PAL version of Chrono Trigger. I don't think you can get it. So it's a bit annoying, and I think I don't, can... I don't think it was released in this country. You're no, right. No, it wasn't. But you can get the Japanese version of it, or the uh, NTSC the version. version. Yeah. yeah, the US version would be the one I'd need. Okay, interesting. Very good. I like that. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to ask another another game related one. Anyway, we don't have many game related ones. They're actually, the, some really? of them are a bit left field. Um, so, four games specifically: Mac, Lan Linux, PC, console, or tablet. Oh, PC. Any day. I mean, I grew up consoles, you know, SNES and stuff like that, but uh, about seventh grade, uh, I was introduced to building my own PC, uh, mm. which was cool. No, actually, that would have been would have been even before that. That would have been fifth grade that I built my first PC. Uh, real hunk of junk. It was a bunch of spare parts and stuff like that, but my dad's a big nerd, too, and he's like, you needed to learn how to do this because computers are important. Uh, this is before broadband, even, you know? So I built it, and I loved it, and it was, you know, it was my baby. I uh, played Final Fantasy VII on it, you know. Uh, I, I played Final Fantasy VII on the PC first PC, as well. PC, yeah. Ah! No, it's got to be... It's, it's got better sound. It's got better music. Oh, much better sound. Uh, but yeah, then uh, you know, that about that time, that was, you know, PlayStation, you know, PlayStation 2, and then my uncle did the, the worst, best thing that he could ever do, and he introduced me to MMOs. Mm, yes, <laughs> and I played I, Anarchy Online. I had an uh, MMO phase, and it lasted about 15 years, and I I've, haven't looked back. I have, I've, I've stopped that, and I haven't looked back because I don't have the time for them. We all started pretty much with the same game, which was EverQuest. EverQuest 1, yeah, yeah. the first original. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, uh, mine was just a little bit after that. Yeah, I did Anarchy Online, but... That was a lot of people that were moving from EQ and stuff mm. like that. And that's where my, my uncle had come from and just loved it. It was completely knocked out of the park that, you know, could play online, you know, with all these people, uh, do all sorts of different stuff, you know. And, and that was, you know, old school sandbox MMO. So I could go wherever I wanted and do whatever I wanted. And it was Space Age and sci-fi, which was really different compared to any uh, a lot of the other games that I'd been playing, which was like Diablo and StarCraft and Warcraft. And so here's this space one, and I'm just like, this is amazing. This is so cool. Look at all this stuff you can do. And, you know, since then, you know, it's been, it's been MMOs. And, you know, I, I love my shooters. And, you know, uh, we, we talked about before this, you know, I was, uh, you know, I, I was clean from WoW, man. I was yeah. clean. <laughs> and, you know, I've been back in for, for less than a month, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I remember why I love this game so I much. Can't, I can't, because I know. I know why I love. I loved WoW, and I know why I loved playing EverQuest and Lineage 2 and all the other games, and Ashron's Call, I mean, but no, no. <laughs> not happening again. Un well, until Deus Ex Universe comes out, then I think I'm bought back in. Uh, but until that, I'm... I'm off. Right, so I'm going to ask you another one. This this might sound a bit weird, but I, I, th I, I think this will show a fair amount about you. What do you think about when you're alone? I can't believe you asked that. Go on. I, I, it's... <laughs> boobies, man. Boobies. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, no, honestly. That, that, that'll when... do. That'll do. <laughs> Next question, now, Chris. No, no, no. I'm, Is I'm, my wife watching the stream? I'm going to stick by this. And there's a few of them like this. I'm not going to ask many more of, of awkward no, ones. But... but this is an awkward <laughs> one for you. So, honestly, to, to be honest, when I'm just sitting around, 
I literally, I've always wanted to write a fantasy novel, and I've got six, seven different characters, and it's just always, it's like, oh, got to wait, you know, wait, waiting for the laundry to finish, and I'm just sitting there with a basket, and just mine just wanders, and it's just knitting up the, the interactions, the connections, and it's it's this story that's sitting back here somewhere, and just anytime I have, you know, half a moment, and it's just like, okay. That's a, <laughs> start thinking about it. That, that's I mean, a very that's, good answer. I'm, very I'm good glad answer. that went better than I was expecting it to. <laughs> <laughs> my okay. first answer, Chris. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. I think we'll ask you one more, and then we'll move on. We'll move on. Okay. Yeah. How about if you won the lottery, would you still do what you do for a living, and would you still do your hobbies? Uh, what I do for a living? No, I would be out of there in in a in a flash. Okay. Uh, but it would be pay off college loans, get a note going. That 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 would be it. Uh, so that that's the I've... that's the answer I wanted. That is the answer I wanted. A nook, uh, a nook is the priority. Yep. If I won the lottery, I'd be the same. I, I'd I'd, yep. I'd concentrate dev. on my hobbies, and that would be it. Follow. Yep. Right. So let's move on. Sure. Enough with the awkward questions. So the uh, the first part of the show normally is we've had uh, we've had an hour of uh, of interview which I think's uh, been pretty good going and you're you're a brilliant you're a brilliant guest you're a brilliant uh, in, interviewee very 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 happy with that so now we talk about games that we've played this week um, <laughs> I actually got some gaming in last night in fact it was this morning at half two because I couldn't sleep um, and I, I just started to come on my PC again and uh, and start playing some so I played. Um, Paranautical Activity, the Deluxe Atonement Edition. I don't know if you're aware of what that is. It is a, it's a roguelike... Um, it's a, 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 no, hang on, Lou. You've, you've even talked about this before, so you should know what this is. It's a roguelike first-person shooter that Lou actually wanted to yes, play. Yes, I forgot. I, I keep forgetting it's called this, but so I know what is, it is now. Yeah. This is the game that was done by the guy that got kicked off Steam by um, uh, for, for threatening Gabe Newell, threatening oh. to kill him. Did he not hear about the indie dev? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, no, I heard about it. Yeah, so it's now back on Steam because uh, uh, they sold their IP to somebody else or another company. I can't remember the details. We talked about it a few weeks ago. So I played it again because I thought, well, what's different about it? The Atonement Edition. I didn't really give it that much chance previously because I'll be honest with you, the first person rogue like kind of thing didn't do doesn't do much for me, and uh, the, the graphics are just like blocks. You know, it's like it's like Minecraft. It's all procedurally generated, like blocky stuff as vector um, what they're called not vectors voxels voxels Fossil. that's it yeah. so I, I had a go again played about another 12 minutes of it and realized no it's not for me it's not my kind <laughs> of thing that. it's you've got you've got a very restricted set of uh, classes you've got like four people that you can choose and each one has different stats very much like most you know roguelikes or or mmo games um but you don't really it doesn't seem to be much advancement i mean i opened a few achievements up but it was like you've got an ankh you know, that's that's your you've opened the anchor and that gives you certain skills. I don't know, it didn't do much for me personally. It looks um, like it'd be fun in multiplayer if it has multiplayer. In. I don't think it does. I think it's all single that's player roguelike, roguelike. But yeah, it's it's very difficult as well. You've got like six hit points, and if you get you, as soon as you get hit by anything, you lose a hit point, and then you you have to if you clear a room without being hit, then you get your health back. I, I, I'll be honest, with you, I didn't. It doesn't really. It doesn't sell itself to me very quickly, and I expect these days a game to go right. Here you go. This is what you do. Have fun with me, you know. But anyway, um, I then had a, a, little, a little go of Skyrim as well because I haven't played that for ages and ages, and I've ploughed hundreds of hours into it. Um, Here's my question about that: Have you beaten it? Yeah, yeah, beaten. So, okay, I, I've beaten the first, the single player, and I've almost a hundred percented everything else that is possible in that game, and nearly every single item in the entire world is in my house as well <laughs> I've got a... the weird thing about skyrim is that the ending sort of appears and goes past very quickly it's like oh okay that was the end was it yeah yeah uh, well, it's a the, very the strange I main quest I, I, I'm, I'm trying to find it here my, my wife loves skyrim played it non-stop i'm trying to find her find her time played yeah 258 hours which for her is is quite a lot 258 hours has not beaten the single player story you it's could... driving me nuts i'm like how do you do that well no the thing is that's that's me but i i put the single player off until i've completed everything else um or, or as much as i can anyway but without getting bored of certain you know certain 
story streams. But um, yeah, I completed it. I complete. I killed the. I killed the dragon at the end. Whatever his name was, I can't even remember. Alderon or something. Oh, that's that's Al- Lord Al- of the Rings, isn't Alderaan. it? Alderon. Alderon. Um, yeah, kill, kill the dragon, and I think I've completed the thil- the thieves guild. I've completed the. They don't have Dark a warrior Wars. guild, do they? In- the, the yeah, companions. They, they have, companions, yeah, companions, that's it. Yeah. I wasn't that keen on the companions one, I have to be honest. It didn't Wait, do much for me. There's a twist in it, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The yeah. One. There you go, there's a twist. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we have long moved past any kind of spoiler tags oh, definitely, yeah, for Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I literally played it for about 10 minutes, but I played my old save, which I think is a mistake if you haven't played a game for so long. Yeah, it's like... What was I doing? Yeah, well, especially because it's you know it's if you can save anywhere in that game, and I was right. in the middle. I was on this fort thing, and I remember just I remember clearing the fort out of people. It was full of bandits, and there was a quest I had to do: go inside the fort, down, and then come back up and uh, or something. And I saved on top of the fort, and I just looked around, and I was like, oh. And I, I was about <laughs> I, I spent about two minutes looking around and then kind of starting to walk in a, pl- a place and then just closed it and I thought you know what I-, I wanted to mention it because that's the feeling I had it was a, a unique experience in terms of yep. I- it I couldn't I was like I've got to start this again I can't I can't get into this from where I was it is a very contextual game isn't it it's a sort of game yeah. where you've got, to, you've got to play um like if you haven't played it in a while I-, I know exactly what I mean you lose what you do and you lose the flow of the quests that you're doing and you just like you know, you walk around for a bit, you look around, you think, I can't what really be bothered going anywhere or who, doing anything. Who was I married to again? What? Uh, what <laughs> where's which, my house? Yeah, where's my ha- Where's one of my house? Yeah. Uh, did, I, did I have any mods installed that did anything special for me? You know, I had, That's um, the worst thing about going back to an Elder Scrolls game is the fact that you've always got to try some mods and you put the mods in and they're all broken or weird. Or you start up and you've got like loads of NPCs coming to you and give you quests and you've got like pieces of paper yeah, and yeah. weapons in your inventory that weren't there before. And it's like, oh. <laughs> I don't I'm, really just want to play this game. I don't want to. I mean, I, I, you know, I would if I, I. I spent three minutes in it or two minutes in it, and that was it. But it still, it still makes me want to play it again. Just going into it for that three minutes, it makes me want to start again and and just nuke the game. Excuse me. Um, I also played a game called Retrograde, which I, I got from a humble bundle many many months ago. I think it was um, a Total Biscuit was doing a review of it or he was doing like his best games of whatever year and Mm -hmm. he said it was good Uh, I think it was on a Steam sale actually that was it it was on a Steam sale and he was doing his um, uh, I was watching one of his videos saying yeah what this is what you should get from this particular and it was next to nothing so I thought why not tried it and it's a rhythm game it's a it's a like a guitar hero that's a shooter but you play backwards and it's it's a bit mind-bending it's very, very, very difficult, but you need a guitar for it, really. I mean, I started playing. I put it on the the. Don't know why. I played it on the uh, on the default setting, and I was getting bored. I was like, right, uh, up, fire, down, fire, up, down, fire. There's only two lanes that you could you could uh, work in. And then I put it on the extreme, the ultra extreme setting, because that's what I used to play when I used to play Guitar Hero many years ago. And I was on a, a pad, so I'm, I'm there's like six lanes, and I'm trying to jump. And I, 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 I lasted so you're doing ten... bucket head backwards <laughs> in this fish. Yeah. No, no, that's the thing. It's all one. It seems to be all one tune as well. You're not choosing a tune. You've got a. You, you just have to match it. You just have to match what's on the screen. It doesn't seem to fit in with the music. So it's it's a bit of an odd off kilter one. It looks nice, don't get me wrong. And the, I mean, the menu can, you know, the menu graphics and everything are all really cool. But I didn't, I've, uh, didn't do much for me. I think maybe you need to play it with some mates again. Maybe it's one of those. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it personally for single player anyway. But I was expecting it to be like a, a, a like an R type type shooter. You know what to call shmups, shmups. Shmup. Yeah. I think I should know that by now. <laughs> now I also played Gary's Mod Murder as well. Um, after last week's show, uh, one of our Josie, in fact, was in chat, and she was asking. She was. We were talking about um, what was that that new game that's come out that, um, that Mythalaw was talking uh, Sales, about. Town of Salem, I think. Town it is. of Salem. So oh, yeah. it's, Town of Salem, you, you you have to kind of figure out. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Are, yeah. yeah, but um, Gary's Mod Murder sh- um, uh, pseudo said, "Have a go of it, see what it's like." And I, I went into it, and I spent first half an hour and I, I was a bit addicted by the end of it so at the first half an hour going what the 
what is going on here? There's kids <laughs> screaming at me. Like, it's two o'clock in the morning and there's, there's Yorkshire kids, like people, kids, from, kids from down the road, they're like really thick accents, English accents, sp- just screaming horrific stuff down this morning. And I've turned, turned the voice all the way down because you have to have the voice on so you can hear right. what other people say because it's important. Because you, basically the premise of the game is you have to... Um, you have to figure out who the murderer is, and if you're one of the bystanders who's got a weapon, you're tr- supposed to kill them. If you're not, you just not. If you're just a bystander, you just have to survive and not be an idiot and kind of team up with somebody who's the murderer and they stab you in the back while you. But it's quite an interesting concept, and it's been out for ages. But I really liked, really enjoyed it. The only thing that really put me off was there was, a, and it, I haven't experienced it for a long time because I haven't played uh, console shooters for a long time. An extreme amount of racism and and nastiness coming out of people's mouths on there as well. Yep. I wasn't keen on that, and there was also quite a lot of uh, girls on uh, playing it with very like um, voluptuous models that they were using, you know, with boobs bouncing all over the place and stuff. And they just seemed to be playing like that so they could get one over on you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and there was it, that right. was their tactic, and they were they were all talking with like puppy dog voices, and I was like. Oh, God. Can you can you not just play the game like oh it's him he did it or whatever you try know? try not playing it at two a.m. Yeah, that might yeah, I was but you say. might find the clientele are probably a bit more <laughs> a bit a bit nicer. I didn't even dare get on the mic though. That's the thing. And whenever I was the murderer, I just didn't say any, I didn't say anything anyway to anybody because I mean I'm not shy. But Silent but deadly. I didn't feel <laughs> I didn't feel comfortable. I actually typed in a chat once or twice and I was thinking maybe I shouldn't be doing this because I'm just going to get destroyed but no one did um i was saying what is the point of this game what is the you know what is the end goal i don't understand what's going on here then i became the murderer and i was like oh right i get it now i understand that there is somebody i I didn't read anything before i went into it so i was and there's no instructions anywhere but i really enjoyed it and i thought it was a really cool concept and it's something i haven't played before so to play it with you yeah it's a i think actually a couple of us going in just to have a have a laugh we'd have to go on a server though with other people Maybe. Well, uh, oh. I know Town of Salem actually keeps you from doing that. What? Sorry. Uh, Town of Salem, uh, the the web browser one, will actually keep you from jumping in with friends because of that. Because then you can basically communicate and ruin mm. the game. So I don't know. Now I, I haven't played Gary's Bond Murder or anything like that, but I'm, I'm curious if they would actually restrict that or not. Probably I not. I don't think yeah. it didn't feel like that. I th- in fact, there was definitely people. Some of the girls that were on there, they were definitely friends because they were talking like they were quite close. And th- yeah. I think they had a tactic of do this, do this <laughs> voice, you know, this this sexy voice to distract all the the young teenagers. And there was a lot of kids on there. I, did, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't particularly comfortable playing it, but I was enjoying the game <laughs> aspect of it, you know. Right. Um. Yeah, so that's that's how I've I managed to get some gaming in last night, and that's uh, the games that I've played. So, um, Drew, what have, have you have you had? Have you been playing anything recently apart from WoW? Then, uh, yeah, uh, WoW's the the big thing, and that's mostly uh, like you were talking about. You know, MMOs for you can't go back, can't go back. For me, WoW is how my wife and I we didn't meet via WoW. We we met in high school, but that was like you know we were poor high school students, and then we were poor college students. So all our dating, all our doing stuff was playing wow so yeah for us going back and playing that it's like oh yeah this is fun to play together and stuff like that um but uh yeah so playing wow that you know um just hit level 100 like earlier today um but, you're up to uh, that now right. is it i think it was yeah, level it 80 was a cap when i played it uh but uh no the other the other ones are uh payday 2 uh, i am i am thoroughly thoroughly addicted to payday 2 they've just got their spring uh spring break stuff so they've, they're pushing out new content like every day for the next week so that's that's always a big thing for me and me and my buddies are getting you know four player co-op just hop in and you know first person shooter go rob banks kill cops uh, don't kill civilians, which I always appreciate. Uh, you're a bad guy, but you're not that bad of a guy. Um, but a uh, little bit of Marvel Heroes. Uh, they they made Venom available, and Venom's Venom's my bro. Uh, is it, Marvel Heroes is a is like an MMO, isn't it? Or uh, I- sort of. Uh, it's Diablo meets an MMO, um, okay. and so it's the isometric and stuff like that. Uh, when I first played it, it drove me up the wall. Because they had so many different restrictions and stuff like that. So if you weren't paying for stuff, then you might as well just not play. Uh, but they've got rid of a lot of that. And then they introduced Venom, who's one of my favorite heroes slash anti-villains slash 
anti villains? Anti hero slash yeah. villains. Wow. I said, if, if Sam was here, he'd be able to engage in this with you because he's really into the Marvel Universe and into his comics and stuff. I'm, I'm not my, myself. But, uh, well, everybody knows who Venom is. Black oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Uh, so, been playing a lot of that. Um, and then uh, Heroes of the Storm, my buddies started to get me playing that again. I don't do MOBAs. Uh, but here's the storm has kind of drawn me in a little bit. So for the casual kind of stuff, it's pretty good. Uh, and then the, the it's not a game I'm playing. It's a game I want to play more of. Uh, is gigantic. Uh, who they're in? Uh, they're in alpha right now. They're uh, from Motiga. Uh, a lot of veteran guys. Indie. I don't even know what you would call it. It's kind of a moba. It's kind of a third person shooter. But you've got um, Team Fortress Smite. It's just this amalgamation of just awesome. Uh, it's really hard to, to describe, but basically, uh, actually, I'm wearing their shirt. Um, uh -huh. They they actually uh, invited me down to what they heard I was going to be at PAX South. So they're like, well, come by the booth, hang out with us. We'll give you a three-day pass instead of just the two-day pass that you're at. Hang out at the booth, work with us and stuff like that. Got to play it a bunch. And it was just like, this is phenomenal. And they're, the big thing for me, though, is they're doing the community stuff. Mm. Uh, they're, they're engaging in the community. They've got an NDA right now, so you can't stream it. Um, you know, if you're in alpha, you can't talk about it, stuff like that. But they've already said, oh, yeah, as soon as we're comfortable, we're going to lift the NDA for, for streaming so people can stream as soon as they can. Um, and not just do the whole, well, now it's released or now it's in open beta so everybody can play, but they're actually looking for their actual community members mm. to actually get to stream it first and stuff like that. So that's really cool. But yeah, I've, I've talked plenty enough. So that those are the games I'm playing right now. Cool. Well, I said, um, I, the Payday 2 is one of those games that I keep seeing, uh, and I'm not actually sure if I've got it or not, but it's one of those games that... It's free this weekend, bro. Is it? Oh, I it might, is, I might it grab is. it then. In fact, but uh, not nah, just a free to play, not to not to buy. Um, that's fine. That's yeah. fine for now, just so I can try test it out. But me, uh, me, Lou, Steve, and Sam, uh, it's the, the other regular hosts on the show, we, we're all always looking for games to play together. I mean, not Sam so much because he's into his consoles and doesn't have a PC that's capable of playing anything uh, good enough. But yeah, he's um, we're we're looking for multiplayer games, and that sounds like it might be okay maybe oh dude i yeah it's it's one of those games because it, it's multiplayer but it's it's co-op at the end of the day um so you know you're always working together if you fail i guaranteed the whole team fails so it's one of those things you actually have to work together you got your different roles and stuff like that yeah darren darren and hitbox he uh played with him for for a little bit too um yeah and it's just one of those good games um I mean, I've got probably eight or ten people, I think, total that I that I know that play it. So yeah. it's always one of those things where it's like, I boot Payday 2 up and I get two or three messages. Hey, we, we grouping up? You know, what's going on? So, you know, round up the four of us and off we go. Rob Banks, Cook Meth, Steel Coke. Yeah, nice. we're, you're, you're, all, you're really bad men. All but... the stuff I like to do in real life. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, recently, they, they just released an update to it, so now... The everybody's favorite part where you can cook meth. Now you can cook meth as long as you want to <laughs> just build up, build up the money uh, and stuff like that and try and escape, you know, more and more cops. You know, it's just, it's that kind of, uh, you know, survival kind of thing. But it's just like, yeah, they just set it up so we can cook as much meth as we want. I think it's actually called the cookout heist. So, yeah. Uh, nice. it's just like, yeah. But uh, they're also big with the community, so... You know, and it, I, I, I do judge a game based on how they interact with their community. So, uh, like, Call of Duty, what community? Yeah. You know? Uh, well, they're you know, just. I, they're, I love shooters, but. Those kind of games are, are just out to make money, though. That's the thing. It's not. They're not. They're, they're good games. Don't, I'm not going to say they're not good games, but they are. They're there for the masses at the end of the day. They're like the, you know, they're like the big blockbusters of the game world. And we, you know, we've said it a million times. It's not going to get to a point where they will ever have. A really good. I mean, I don't imagine even clans that are formed with that. They really. I haven't heard of any leagues or any kind of. Uh, well, yeah, they'll they'll do a tournament, and you know, you'll have your different teams, you know, but that you know, that's it, and they're never big tournaments because it's really hard to watch first person shooters, you know, in in terms of you know esports and stuff like that. It's really hard to sit down and watch a shooter because either you're watching from the 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 bird's eye view and trying to see everybody shooting you can't see any skill you just see this guy shot at this guy this guy died uh, hmm. but you know if you're doing it from oh well i'm going to first you know we're going to spectate from so-and-so's point of view cool 
So you're seeing this, you know, super twitch, you know, movement around. It's really, it's one of the reasons why first person shooters haven't taken off in terms of esports. Call, you know, Counter Strike's a little different because it's a little bit slower paced. The maps are a little bit more open. And honestly, everybody knows Counter Strike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, said so we, we, again, we keep talking about the old Quake, Quake days and that. I mean, I used to really enjoy watching people play Quake. Quake Two, mm -hmm. uh, Quake Two specifically. I think you um, had to be you had to be at quite a high level uh, as a player to be able to appreciate the games. Though it's like trying to watch. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really enjoy watching Supreme Commander games, but mm -hmm. I only enjoy watching because I know enough about the game to be able to play it. I get you that. If, I was... if you if you don't know how to play it, then you can't watch these games. You don't know what the hell is going on. I was watching a, an RTS. Uh, was it an RTS? Yeah, an RTS called um, Zero K. The other day, um, one of our regular viewers, Whoop Potato Power, he uh, he sent me a link on Steam actually via the the PM system, and he uh, he he sent me a link to a Twitch stream, and I watched it, and there was someone commentating on it. The only reason that I kept watching is because the commentator was very good and knew what he was doing. There were there was some kind of league system going on. I didn't really fully follow that, but he, I was asking questions in chat because I was I've never seen the game before, and he was explaining how it how it was. He wasn't annoyed at me. He wasn't not engaging with me. That's why I stayed to watch it. it wasn't particularly because I was enjoying watching the game. I didn't really care what was going on in the game. I liked hearing his voice. That was all it was, you know. Mm. But yeah, I uh, you might be right there. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why FPS games haven't haven't taken off in the e-stop sports arena. I never, never really thought of it that way, because I always associate FPS games with uh, more interesting to me than an RTS game or a, or a MOBA. I mean, I, I don't I don't have a clue what's going on with MOBA games when I watch them. I sit and watch um, uh, Dota or what's mm -hmm. the, is it League of Legends. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll sit and watch them, and I just have no idea what's going on. I understand that there's a hero, and there's little, what they're called? Fledgling, minions. Minions. Yeah. But you don't control the minions, do you? And then you have to last hit in order to get some gold or something like that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. or that, does that happen in all the MOBAs? It doesn't. No, you're no. right. Yep. I, 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 that's a, that's the, my limit of understanding with it. I'm sorry for my ignorance. but. <laughs> um, so, Lou, you played anything since I Wednesday? No. No, nothing. Sorry. <sighs> You're terrible. You need, you need to get on that. I know. Just put a, put an hour aside a week or something, you know? The, the hours yeah, that I'd I put aside a week. Are, the, the, the hours that I put aside a week are for, for things that I need to do. Um, All right, but fair yes, enough. I, I, I will. I, I'm yearning to play games. I'm yearning to play games that I've played before. Though. That's a problem. I'm, I want to play Dishonored again and I want to play Fallout 3 and things like that but i've got to that point with um with films for example i don't want to watch any of the more recent films that have come out i just want to watch the film the classics the ones i know you know maybe i'm at that age i'm scared of everything <laughs> scared of everything new i'm afraid of change yeah. yeah okay so we're going to move on to our next section which is uh, the way of the exploding list <laughs> that is that is our cgi effects it's amazing. that was a really good one i put my whole <laughs> And I did, Soul I, into that. To be fair, I think yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to get. We've got the team thing going on here with it. Um, anyway, so this is uh, this is a section where one of us, this can be anybody here or anybody in chat, uh, can throw a list at us or, or something, and we will try and come up with something. You know, the best, the best protagonists in games or our favourite weapons in games. We've done a lot of them, so we'll we obviously didn't we'll decline quite a few. Have you got anything as our guest? Have you got anything you reckon? Uh, we could go through. Does it make sense to start off with? We always struggle so with this section. I, I, th I, th I think I, I understand what you're going with as I stutter. Um, but uh, no, trying to figure out See, like a last week. Um, of someone in chat came up with um, favorite. It was not, Josie again. Yeah, it was Josie again. Yeah, um, <laughs> came up with uh, fa not favorite foods, but foods that are only in computer games. Now yeah. we struggled like hell for ages. We've got new wall turkey, man. What? Sorry. Wall turkey. Wall that turkey. That, that you played Castlevania, right? Oh, not for years. No, not for years. But I mean, you you at least remember hitting blocks and turkeys just suddenly appearing. No, but, but that I suppose you hit bins and stuff, and turkeys come out of like streets right, of exactly. rage. Wall kind turkey. Of and, yeah, oh, I've yeah. never heard that term before. That's good. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, you know, trash apples and yeah. That's what. I, yeah, that was the first thing that I said. So I didn't realize there was an actual proper name for no, it. Proper wall term. turkey. Oh, wow. trash turkey. apples. <laughs> yeah, so, so we came up with things like Nuka Cola <laughs> from um, Oh yeah, from Fallout Three. We came up with um, oh god, 
Cheese I can, wheels and che- uh, <laughs> Cyrodiil brandy. Cyro- Cyrodiilic brandy, <laughs> yeah. And um, there's one I came up with, Quammer eggs from, Quammer eggs, yeah. from Morrowind. Um, but yeah, I, we really, really struggled. But if anybody has best locations in games, we've got from Corpse in Twitch chat. Best locations? you got to define, like, why are they the best locations? Like... Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's really difficult to come up with this, and I'm not sure if we're going to keep continuing with the list section in the show because it is it's it's one of those bits where we I feel like we ram we ramble a little bit because we can't come up with anything good. Ah, uh, it uh, what is that Oscorp? Corp? Get, get give us an adjective. Be- best looking locations, best you know scary locations. Get, give us an adjective there, man. Yeah, that's a good uh, point actually because but we've we've already kind of done like scenery, haven't we? Which is similar kind of thing to. Mm. Best locations. I uh, I'll see. If, I'm just gonna have a look on my list because I usually have well, something written uh, down. While but. he's while he's working on that over on Hitbox, Nordy said, "How about best immersion breaks in video games?" Immersion break. Ooh. Yeah, and and I, I I've not played it, but Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're doing a Metal Gear uh, Metal Gear run at the moment um, as Resident oh. Arcade. Where I, I've played through one, two three we're on the very last section of three but our commentator sam was because of his bad internet he's not been able to come on the sh- uh, come and do it for a while so we've, we've been about five six weeks now that we've we've holding off on the final section of metal gear so the last <laughs> hour and uh but yeah what, what do you mean psycho madness breaks the immersion know, exactly. uh, i'm plugging your controller and plug it into part two that's what it means clearly yeah or well, that's, fourth uh, wall. that's that's genius though that, right but it breaks the immersion all of a sudden you immediately know you're in a video game because he'll even make comments about like oh i've seen you've been playing such and such because he'll read your memory card yeah. and immediately boom out of the video game i haven't even played it and i'm just like that's one of the reasons i can't play it because like oh the story is amazing and i'm like Cool, but you. Oh, Psycho Mantis! But that's a good reason for playing it. I mean, you can't play. The problem is, is experiencing that for the first time was very different from you know that that's coming now. Right. You know that you have to unplug it and plug it. It's different. When you first played it, I spent ages. I, I mean, it was really, really frustrating. Don't get me wrong. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I was like, oh my god, that's brilliant. That is a brilliant way of. of- yep. Of implementing Corp, that. Corpse particularly. has mentioned the most um, emotional games that tug at the heartstrings, or God. make you want to personally hurt oh, someone in obvi- the game. Obviously, Final Fantasy VII's up there, isn't it? With oh, his, uh, everybody again, jumps in on that. that. Yeah. Oh, uh, emotional experiences in games, though. That's he, that's quite interesting. The, here's the one for me. Uh, Fable Two. Uh, have you guys played it? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, I'm trying to think and which part though. There's the bit where he kills your dog. Oh God. Any any animal dying in a anything right. to be uh, fair, is, and, and is... I can I can't even remember what the, uh, the there's a specific term for it, but yeah, it's basically you know we care more about you know animals it seems than than other humans. But yeah, no, uh, for for those of you who haven't seen it, Fable Two, you're the big hero, you're off to save the day. You've always had this dog companion with you the entire time, and he he works kind of like um, a UI. He'll like point, he'll growl when enemies are nearby. He'll run over to treasure. You know, he kind of just kind of gears you and points you. It's a great mechanic, and I, I hope somebody revives it in future games. But at one point, the the big bad guy's got the gun to you, and he's gonna kill you. And the dog like jumps in front oh, of the way and takes yeah. this shot for you. And it's just like, you killed my dog. I, it, it, it is it is it is go time now. <laughs> hmm. There will be retribution, you know. Uh, so yeah, that that's the one that you know jumps to mind. Final Fantasy VII, Death of Aerith. That's always a big one too. The um... I think my predominant emotion in many games is awe. Is is you know they've been awestruck by something amazing. Yeah, it's more than it is any other single emotion. Um, but but things that actually emotionally affect me. There's not a lot of games that do that. Oh, The Walking Dead, the uh, oh, the right, sure. um, Telltale games, Telltale. Walking Dead. That does ha- that does pull on the heartstrings in a number of different ways. I said I've got certain criticisms about the game, but I- I- it tells a good story, and and nearly every single decision you have to make is emotional and attaches you to the characters. And that's I think is the is the definition here, isn't it? Is being able to uh, either relate to the characters or being able to attach yourself to them and, and know that they're real 
uh, real mm. in some way. And that that's a credit to the voice actors, to the script writers, to even to the animation to an extent. I mean, even though the animation in The Walking Dead is blatantly not realistic, it still mm. works, you know, and and right. you know keeps you keeps you emotionally interested. Um, I think maybe um, one the. And maybe when when I first played it, I didn't really get the full hit the full gravitas of what was going on. But in Borderlands Two, when you um, when you have to kill Angel, yeah, that was the next one I was going to bring up. Yeah, that's um, well, I haven't played through it again. I realised that's actually really well voice acted and really well put together. I mean, for the first time in the game, you really kind of get a sense that maybe I've been a bit of a bastard here. And even though that Handsome Jack is a complete bastard. But he's, he's, he's such a great just character. just killed though, his he? daughter. It, yeah. Uh, you just spoiled it, it, it for it's, everybody. Well, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's a really rough spot. And then you have Roland after. And if you guys, uh, I, I don't know if you've played, did you play the DLC, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons yes, DLC? Did. Oh, yeah, I yeah. yeah the end of that. that. And it's just like, oh, that was good. Uh, which, uh, minor follow up, I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, the Telltale Games. Um, Tales from the Borderlands, they have episode two coming, and Handsome Jack is back right. as a hologram. I haven't followed the, the, the Borderlands stuff with them yet. I, 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 again, just haven't had time recently to yep. follow that. Uh, no, I, I, I need to go back and play Tales from the Borderlands now, because my buddy's got it, and I've got the, the Steam share with him, so whatever he owns, I own. I love it. Uh, so yeah, I need to, need to hijack that from his account for a little while and go actually play it. God, I'm, I'm just trying to think of other people that have died in computer games. I'm even thinking of things like Call of um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first one. Because at one point... You know what? Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, at one point, I can't remember the name. Is it Price? Is it Price that dies? Or does he come back at the in the next one? There's one of the main characters in that game. And even though, again, we have criticisms of these games, the story, I think, is quite good in that. And what, what oh, happens? Which what? Call of Duty were you talking about? Uh, Modern Warfare One specifically. Okay, I think. right. Oh, yeah, it? no, that's the one. It, the nuke. Is that what you're talking about? I can't remember. There's something okay. in that. I remember when I played it. Uh, I was like, <gasps> well, yeah. There, there, there's two bits in that. One was more emotional to me than the other. Uh, in Modern Warfare, uh, at one point, uh, you're you're playing as one of the characters, and I can't remember who it is. Uh, but you're heading in, and the nuke goes off, and the helicopter crashes. And it's like, okay, we got to get out of here. Or uh, rather, the nuke doesn't go off. The helicopter crashes beforehand. So you go, you find the, the pilot, you rescue her, you know, body carrier to the helicopter. We're getting out of here. The nuke goes off. And I was thinking, because, you know, so many times uh, characters have plot armor. So the character you're playing usually survives anything. You know, something miraculous happens, something happens, and you get away. Yeah. And... It so you know the helicopter crashes and so you get up and you're wounded and I'm like okay cool, uh you know okay I've got to do the whole slow drag myself get away and stuff like that and then you're you know you're trying to cr you know get away from the wreck and you stand yourself up and then you fall over and you die and I'm like holy crap I just died and it, and and that's the exact thought was the I just died not he died but you, know, you portrayed your character and I was just like oh that was. That was something, something serious, you know. And I'm like, I, I need a moment. That, that was, you know, kind of touching because it was that low, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think the one you're talking about, I think it is Price, and he gets shot at the end. Yeah. And then he slides the gun over to you, and you shoot the guy. Yeah. There's, uh, there's also the bit in Gears of War Two, is it? Oh, Gears of the yes, the yes. dumb, the dumb bit. We have talked about this. Do we, do we yeah. have this? emotional we did thing or was it cinematic moments or something like that i think it was cinematic moments yeah but no the wet dom just have you have, again you must have played gears of war maybe actually maybe? believe it or not i've never played any of the gears of war games okay. um but i've read all the novels oh interesting, <laughs> interesting yeah um I it is one of those games that I've wanted to play, and one of my uh, I used to work at GameStop, a local uh, as a game store, and my assistant store manager was like, "No, dude, the the gameplay is you know whatever, but the story is really really good. Uh, you should you know." And so I borrowed his books and read them, and so I had to ask some questions to try and figure out what had happened between. Yeah, the context. But yeah, yeah. the yeah basically I read the book that happens between two and three. Uh, and so you get the the aftermath of the events of 
too, and I was just like, oh, this is pretty good. So yeah, no, I'm familiar. So is it, again, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's the end of three, isn't it, where Dom basically sacrifices himself uh, and not yeah dom yeah dom dom sacrifices himself and uh marcus is basically sat looking over the vista uh, right at the end of the, the, the end of the game and he's he's basically sat contemplating the fact that he's just lost his best friend uh, the 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 earth is pretty much much shattered and he you know he, he doesn't see what's coming up in the future and i really felt that when i played that and i, I invested in the gears of war franchise quite a lot quite because i thought again that the story was brilliant from start to finish there's a lot of twists and turns i actually enjoyed the gameplay i know a lot of people criticize it for its sluggishness and the fact that it's just another cover shooter but i liked i enjoyed that and i i loved the i love the active reload and that kind of thing you know i liked the and I love playing multiplayer as well. I played with that, that with a lot of friends. Um, someone's mentioned in chat, Naughty in chat mentioned the um, Katawa Shuju. Shuju. Never heard yeah, of it. Yeah, not familiar with that one. No, uh, no. Okay, right. Well, let's not talk about it then, just in case. <laughs> um, you can tell me about it later. Yeah, uh, but he did bring up Mass Effect, mm -hmm. which is another big one. Um, so depending on who you ask, I know some people it elicits very different responses. For me, it's an amazing story and I love it. For my wife, it elicits rage and anger <laughs> because of the ending of 3. Uh, she loved this series and she loved 90% of 3 and then she got to the end of 3 and she was just like, I'm done, I hate it, it's terrible. The entire thing is ruined because of the ending of 3, even with the updated ending. No, I, I, I didn't get know. that. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the yeah, experience. And just because the end wasn't what I wanted it to be, it's not my choice what that should be. It's the right, the story writer's choice. Mm -hmm. If they want to take it down that particular... It only took, I, know, I know it was a bit lazy, you know? That's my only real criticism of it. They could have done something more fantastical. But I still mm -hmm. think it it worked, kind of, fish. I mean, it was only a manifestation, the, the child, wasn't it? It wasn't a, that. It wasn't the fact that a child was running the universe. Mm. It just so happened no, to be that uh, that's what they, they looked like. Was, sorry. Uh, her problem was the lack of epilogue of what actually happens and stuff like that after the fact and some closure. There's no, nothing okay. there. And even the, the actual new ending you know, didn't even add that. Uh, but talking about that, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the name Anthony Birch, the writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Writer okay. of Bond, so yeah. Right. Um, he did an article the other week about things about video game design, that uh, video game development I didn't know until I did them. Uh, and one of the big things he talks about is, you know, yes, we're not, for all your yelling and raving, we are not idiots. We do know that sucked. This sucked, that sucked, we know. But it was a question of time and energy and money that we could, you know, where to put and develop it. And he's like, one of the big things that suffers is endings. And he's brought up Borderlands 2 specifically, but I think it applies to Mass Effect 3 because the ending for Borderlands 2 is, it's that, you know, oh, the warrior, oh, we killed it. And that's it. You mm. know, that that's that's it. But, he's, but he brought up because most people never get to the ending. They go and they play the vast majority of the game and then they get tired of it or, you know, and so which would you rather have a really, really amazing ending and a mediocre story and, and middle, or would you have a, a really good, you know, middle and then that mediocre ending? And he, he also brought up that the ending for the, the DLC was for him. That was the real end of Borderlands it was, 2. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was really well done. So, hmm. Seeing that, I was like, yeah, no, I totally get it. Endings are always going to kind of suck. A, because we're always going to hype them up to be what we want. But also because in terms of game development, it's really hard to put a lot of time and effort and development into an ending when you could put a lot of that money and time and effort into developing everything else. Yeah. I so. think the, the argument is is that if you're a AAA studio, though, you should really be able to do it all, you know? Mm -hmm. Right to an extent, you've got the. You, I know again, there are always budget constraints and things like that, and political issues and, and, and bureaucracy, etc. But it still doesn't really excuse them being lazy. They're still charging a lot of money for their games, and this and some indie games. I look again. I keep bringing it up time and time again. It's not a particularly great game to play, but the story and the amount of effort that was put into um, making it interesting. Um, Thomas was alone. The story for yeah. that. That that was that was done on a shoestring budget. The the story and the voice acting was 
was paramount to that game. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been. So in fact, the story, the the voice actor, and the music won um, won Baftas, didn't it? Well, we, I, think, uh, was it, was I know it? they they were award winning at least. Yeah, yeah. The, I think uh, Mythalor, the, the, our guest last week, um, informed us of that. And that that you know the, the the fact that the game didn't actually win anything, but the, mm-hmm. all of the, the all of the stuff on top of it proves something that it's important. <clears throat> Anyway, right. I I'm not sure if we're flogging a dead dead horse with the uh, the rest of the emotional stuff. We could probably find a few more. And I know for a fact so there's a, there's a reason that I love games, and it's because I have an emotional attachment to them. And there's always emotion involved in even in, even the games that don't have story into the characters, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm I'm struggling. I'm really struggling to come up with any spe- more specific examples of bits that I've been shocked at or angered. But never thought of angered actually, apart from the end of Mass Effect, I suppose. <laughs> Mass Effect, yeah. yeah. The, uh, that's that, the that's only... not a game causing anger for the right reasons, or is it? Right. That's, that's uh, basically yeah, being you were shit. A- angry at the story. You were angry at the game. Yeah. Angry at the no, real the ol- world. Yeah. Yeah. The only the only other one that I can bring up is World of Warcraft. Um, uh, at the end of the Lich King fight, basically there's this whole thing of, well, there always has to be a Lich King. Uh, spoilers for those of you who haven't beaten the fight. Uh-huh. Too bad, so sad. We're expansions beyond that. But basically the Lich King, Arthas, is is dying and is about to die. And it's like, well, here's the trick. We need to have a Lich King. Somebody needs to take on the mantle. And so this guy, Bolvar Fordragon, who's been, you know, this a leader for the Alliance, and he's always been this good guy, he's like, yeah, no, I've been tortured, I've been maimed, his, like, half of his body is, like, scarred, and he's like, it's cool, I got this. And he lumbers himself up to that frozen throne, sits down, and, you know, puts on the helmet, and just leans back, and ice encases him, and he's just like, no, I will bear this burden. And it was just like, dude. <laughs> you know, and, it's, and it was just... just Right, and you know they uh, that was uh, uh, you know the uh, the Lich King expansion was was, was that know, done in real time or was that done uh, as a as a FMV at the end because I've never completed anything on it's, WoW. Uh, it's actually uh, it, it's an in engine cinematic, but it's not done with uh, it's not with you watching. It is an it is an FMV, right. uh, but it is using the in engine, which is really nice because it doesn't yank you out. And stuff like that. But yeah, he basically sits and, oh, yeah, it actually might be fully cinematic. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, but yeah, he sits there and, you know, puts on, and it was just, it's a really, emo- and I remember doing it with a bunch of, you know, friends uh, and, you know, a bunch of people, you know, the the non lore hounds, you know, they all skip through. You know, I'm over here, shut up, shut up, shut up, I'm watching this. You know, and afterwards, you know, me and, the, you know, a couple of other guys who watched it were like, holy crap, that was awesome you know and of course we're horde side so we don't care it's a bulvar four dragon no loss to us but that's really cool that sacrifice and stuff like that afterwards you know we walk over and you know he's you know he's sitting in the throne and it's just like dude this you know he, he you know it's the sacrifice play you know and you always you I always say, have to respect i'm just going to say this seems to be a common theme here with the dog in fable 2 that's a sacrifice <laughs> thing yeah with the, the Ares, even though at the time you don't know it she is sacrificing herself for the good of the rest of the world when you right. know the end of every you know, a lot yeah a lot of this is all to do with sacrifice <laughs> mass effect 3 you are sacrificing yourself depending yeah uh, well you sacrifice yourself either way don't you i think uh, i think one of them you can survive uh, or not in the original ending i think it was all you're dead or if you had a certain uh if you met a certain requirement like you have this whole bit where you like you know your eyes blink and stuff like that and it gets starts to get back up or something like that right. uh but yeah uh, for the most part, you sacrifice yourself, which is, for me, that is the ending. It's that um, the green portal, whichever one that was, uh, the symbiosis and stuff like that, and he sacrifices himself to make it happen. Done, perfect, that's the ending. Himself? I was a fem chef. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah I was going to say, I red-headed always, fem chefs. I always find that weird, because I, I played as a fem, fem chef from the very beginning and passed my save all the way through. I played on the 360. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's weird, because most people, most most male gamers, anyone I speak to, played as a as a male, and they all talk it's about actually, him. It's <laughs> actually, um, I, I remember they put out the stats, and it's like 52-48 <clears throat> split. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, it's really close to half and half. Uh, and I know for a lot of people, like my wife, she always plays female characters, and, but she decided that she was going to do a male character today, get some of the different dialogue, do some of the other romance choices, and go, uh, I can't remember, she had run a game that was just going to do Paragon, and she played for like five minutes, and she's like, never mind, I'm done. Hmm. And I was like, why? I can't stand his voice. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, it's, um, what, what's her name, Jennifer Hale? She, for, for, for being one of the people who doesn't play video games a lot, she's a phenomenal voice actress. You know, I... like Nolan North 
and uh what's his name um i was in love with fem shep by the time i finished that mm -hmm. game I, I loved i loved I, I mean i made the character as well so it was you know it was right. nice seeing all of the additionals like the scars and everything that was added on as as you played the game um as you played yep. through the series rather brilliant brilliant series and i hope they keep up the quality with the new release you know yeah whatever it is gonna yeah. be I mean, I'm a I'm a big uh, big Bioware fan in general. I think I've I've been following them for a long time, and I I really like all of their I like the style of their games, but because it's slow paced more more than anything, because the most of them are kind of turn based, they're not as action orientated. You don't have to. Mm. I know um, uh, Mass Effect isn't turn based, but you know what I mean. It's it's slightly different the combat. I don't know. It feels different from other third person games. Other yeah well shooters. they they built it you know especially with the first one they built it for rpg players in mind and so when they the second one came out they stuck with that rpg feel and then they added in some more mm. shooter stuff for the guys because I, I mean they said so themselves when they were getting ready to release too they're like we had no idea this many shooter fans were going to pick it up we didn't build it for shooters in mind so that's why like on the pc the shooting mechanics are a lot better for one and then two and on they're actually pretty spot on shooter mechanics. So. Mm, yeah, I t again, it's the same happened with Gears of War though. As they got mm -hmm. you know, further into the series, they improved the mechanics of the shooting and the the interaction with the environment and the you know fighting uh, like the melee combat and stuff. And I you know I, I'm glad that they do do that. I'm glad they don't just leave it as it as it is. It's not often these days I don't think that they they break something when they you know games that i've enjoyed anyway at least right <laughs> that's a bit of a nonsense phrase to say but you know right so let's move on to the news then i think that's enough of the list se list section uh, we haven't got <laughs> much because uh, last our last show was last wednesday um right. for those for those of you who are brand new to watching the show uh, we own we usually stream wednesdays at 7 30 p.m gmt uh, but because uh, because drew is american and he can't do during the week we decided to have a one-off saturday show so uh, we actually say one off. We've got another American on the show next Saturday. Um, oh, who we got, got next week? Uh, we've got a guy called uh, a guy, a guy called Matt Chelan, uh, and I think his website is uh, another day another game dot com or something like that. Um, I, I, I've been following him. We've been following each other on Twitter for quite some time, and he's he's a he's a very um, opinionated gamer let's say so i'm looking we forward like to having that. him yeah exactly we like yeah. to have people who come on and give us their opinions he's, he's quite a negative opinionated gamer as well so we i'm quite like interesting that. quite <laughs> interesting to see that as well um right so yes news uh, again some of this is is nonsense but we'll we shall move we'll we'll go through it as uh, quickly as we can uh sony won't refund a hacked user's um psn account apparently someone hacked some user's account spent six hundred dollars and they have threatened to ban his account if he goes to his credit card company. Now, I don't know how much truth is in this because it was a, a Reddit story that, that kicked off. Um, I'll paste a link into the chat. But I just wondered, again, people's opinions on this. I mean, what do you think? What, what do you think? Should PSN refund us? I think they've offered to refund one hundred and fifty dollars. No, I don't think they should. I think if you if you're in a situation where you allow your account to be compromised, and this is not hacking, let me put this straight. Yeah. No one's accounts are being hacked here. People are, are being, having their accounts compromised because they're either not using a good security methods, they're not setting a good password or whatever. So. I, I don't think he should be refunded. I think he should be taught a lesson to keep his account secure, really. Okay. Because how can they prove it? If if it was Sony's fault that his account was hacked, then fair enough. But it, it, I don't think it was. Well, the thing is, the th one of the arguments here is that usually in this situation, say, for example, um, I had a, a, a time a while back, I was stupid enough, and it was totally my fault, to te ask my wife to text me the credit card number that I'd left at home. So I asked her to text me, and then the next thing I knew, I had uh, six hundred pounds worth of train charges from Europe somewhere on my card. That's the only time anything like that has ever happened to me. I'm very, very secure. I've got passwords. Everything is different passwords for everything, you know. And I've got hundreds of accounts all over the place. Um, but they stop, put a stop on it and refunded me the credit card company. It's the credit card companies who who give you that uh, what's it called guarantee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I, I'm on your side. I don't think PSN should have refunded him or even offered him a £150 store credit, which is what they've done here. Because they've got no real way of knowing that he didn't spend that $600. No, they don't. They don't at all. And it's not really their responsibility, personally. No. Uh, honestly, the, the way I look at it, um, my, my issue is the fact that the guy has... Um, 
they're, they're threatening to ban his account uh, if he goes to the credit card company. Because yeah. you know, if, if if this is a legit thing, that is the process through which he needs to go, and the you know it, it's between the two businesses to work out how the money is going to to work out. But the user needs to be protected. The credit card needs to protect him, and Sony should not you know deny him for because here's the thing: the six hundred dollars. Well, if his his account has been hacked and it's six hundred dollars, what was that stuff? Were they games? Because they're going to be on his account yeah. to remove them. Are they videos? Are they movies? Where did this six hundred dollars go? Yeah, there's not much and detail it, on that, unfortunately. But it is a Reddit post, so and right, yeah, it's one of those uh, things. And, and so for me, it's like if it's if it's content that he can't access anymore, then you know, so be it. You know, are, are you telling, you know, the other question is like IP addresses. I guarantee that if it was a movie streamed, I guarantee they know where it was streamed to. You know, so for me, I think this is, this is honestly a little bit of laziness on Sony's part. They don't want to put the time and effort and they're looking at, here's the other thing. It's $600. In, in terms of big game developer, you know, or not even game developer, because this is Sony we're talking about. Hmm. Six hundred dollars is not a huge thing to them. Um, they just need to be very clear now that it's out in the open. They need to be very clear their policy and what happened and why things happened and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, because Sony's been hacked multiple times, this doesn't look good on their end. Even though it's probably not actually hack, mm. it's just somebody got hold of a password, somebody, you know, anything like that. So, yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think we're we're all on the same page here. I think at the end of the day, it's a user's responsibility to keep their their accounts safe and secure. Um, Sony can't be or any big publisher or any big account holder. Say, for example, someone on a Nook was was hacked. You know, their account was hacked. You do everything you can to help them out, but if you were humongous and you had hundreds of thousands of millions of users and like Sony do, you wouldn't be able to maintain that level of the same level that you give now surely mm -hmm. i mean you wouldn't be able to of custom service i mean you wouldn't be able to maintain that forever unless you employed another 200 300 of you you know which right. may be possible maybe your main goal you know uh, but i think i think it's just yeah i think the i think i think them offering 150 dollars is quite generous i have to be honest yeah I, honestly i'm 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 of, of the point that there doesn't need to be a refund that it's the credit card company that needs to work it out. The The card was used fraudulently. Cool, that's up for the credit card company to work out. My problem with it is Sony saying, well, if you go to the credit card company, we're going to ban you. Yeah, and I, and, I keep, and I keep missing that when I say it. But yeah, that I, that is my yeah. main problem too. Um, okay, so recently we've, see, we've seen a, a rise in indie game publishers. Now, this is, this is more on our game dev side of things. It's not necessarily about gaming, but... Um, I mentioned it last week because we were fairly game dev heavy. The, there's there's a lot of publishers out there these days that are coming out that are helping indie devs out specifically. So we're talking about Team Seventeen, Mastertronic. Um, there's a, a Devolver Digital, I think, who I think they were involved in their uh, Hotline Miami stuff. Is that lots right? Lots of stuff. Lots yeah. of yeah. But yeah, the, the, of now what what these are doing now? I, we we briefly talked about them last week, but I've got an article here that I was reading uh, early on this week, and it basically goes into quite a lot of detail about how and why this is this is coming up. Essentially, the existing publisher model of big publishers, EA, Sony, Microsoft, that who taking the, uh, a developer's IP and then basically dictating to that developer what should be in the game and then releasing it. That is that is fast becoming quite boring, I think, and quite quite a chore for developers, and especially indie developers who put the heart and soul into everything. And they don't, you know, they don't want to give away that IP. I certainly wouldn't with my game. I, you know, it's taken me years to get it to the point it's at now. It's still not in a publishable state, but when it does get to that point, I don't want to go, yep, all right, and then you can tell us to take another three months or tell us to take two weeks to do three months' worth of work in order to, you know, get something out the door that will sell to your customers. Indie publishers now 
although they are helping. I, I, I've spoken to, I'm under NDA, so I can't go into too much detail, but I've spoken to a few, and they tend to help with more than just the publishing side of things. They'll help with testing, Q&A, um, they'll help with publishing, they'll help with marketing, they'll help with getting you on stands and, you know, getting you out there. They're, they're quite public about this, so it's not something not something I'm stepping on anyone's toes with. Uh, mm. you know, so, but, but it's very different. I think it's more of a personal touch, and it, again, goes back to kind of what a nook is about it's more personal it's more direct it, it goes to more about what we are uh, as, as streamers are doing we try and engage with our audience as much as we can you know I'm, i know we're we're not the best in the world but we do try and get that community thing going and uh, anyway this article i'm going to post paste this into chat as well but it's interesting to see that it's kind of going down this route and i kind of like that i kind of like that it's uh, ended up there what do you think I know you probably haven't read the article, but what do you think about indie game publishers in general? And, and Actually, uh, I, I, I skimmed the article while we were talking about it. Um, I'm semi-familiar with it. Uh, Devolver Vi uh, Digital is actually one of the companies that uh, we've tried to reach out to um, at, a, at a convention out here in, in Texas. Uh, unfortunately, none of their people who could make decisions was there. It's a very small con anyway, so not too surprising. But... Um, yeah, I love it, and it's one of the things that we want to get a nook involved in is you know this tool that you know they can basically say, okay, yeah, you're an indie dev, you've got this stuff. Here's a place to promote content, and because like for for instance, the the tools that are out there now, Twitter and Facebook are, are and Reddit, we'll, we'll throw that in there, are the three big ones, but none of them allow you to see stuff until you've already seen it. Uh, in order to follow Resonance Arcade, you mm. need to go to Resonance Arcade and click follow. You know, uh, Reddit. If you you know, you can either post to the scary, scary slash you know r slash gaming. Mm. You know, with the teeming masses of people who are more than happy to downvote anything that looks I, like self promotion. I've had very limited experience of Reddit, and I have not enjoyed it at all. Yeah, uh, um, you know, and so you, you have problems, you know, because like the 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 minor small Reddits, like game specific ones, like Payday has a pretty pretty good one. Gigantic has a pretty good one, but they're all smaller, you know, uh, and so they can actually have this nice community. But again, if you want to do that, you need to be told about it, and you need to go to it and follow it. But if you're a brand new indie dev and brand new indie game that's coming out, how is somebody supposed to know that? Hmm. Yeah, you know, how is somebody supposed to know that you exist? So, you know, here in Devolver Digital, they're like, oh, hey, check out this game that's coming out. We're publishing it. So you've got help with that. But it's one of the things, it's why uh, Nook has the indie developer Nook, where are you interested in indie games? Follow, and anytime something's posted there, you will see it. And so... so there's a lot so of... There's a lot of things out there, not just a nook. I mean, there's a lot of things out there to sure. help indie publishers. But again, it comes down to the what you your you know time versus um, you know amount of things to do versus time. It's it, it is always that. I have put quite a bit of effort into put, um, the PR side of things so far, but I still don't haven't I haven't put anywhere near enough. I mean, a thousand followers on Twitter is not a lot. You know, it is, right. it's nowhere near enough to sell any quantity of games when I got you know get to that point. But at the moment, I'm not focusing on that. Everything you can do will help. But I think, I think it's getting to a point now where people or indies that are actually serious about publishing games, I think they're going to maybe value these indie publishers a little bit more than they would ever value like a serious publisher. Because as soon as you become a, a, an indie that's gone to a big publishing house, you're no longer an indie and you never will be ever again. You're either going to disappear into the ether or you're going to get bought out or you're going to you know expand into a huge studio it's just generally the the way it would go you know if you you you, you might become famous from it but it's not the point you know you know it's not it's not about mm. fame um i just think i just think these new indie publishers are, are probably the future for indie you know I, I think personally i think it's very difficult because of the 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 the, the amount of content out there the amount of indie games that are getting published on steam every week uh, every daily in fact i think it's getting to a point now where the ones that need to stand out are going to go to these publishers and they're, they're going to uh, engage with them and get their i don't know get their name out there more i think the publishers are still fairly fussy they're not they're not <laughs> as fussy as as the giants but they're still fairly fussy about what they will and won't take on 
but well, it's the it's the start, you know. And until we have some place, I mean, Steam Greenlight is kind of the 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 right direction. But until we have something where indie developers can create their own game and have tons of tools that they can use to promote their own stuff, you're never going to have indie developers get really big unless it's a super viral hit or they have support from some publisher. Mm, exactly. Uh, so next, this is uh, this is not necessarily something you will know much about or follow because it's a, a very English thing. Um, BBC over here, you must have heard of the BBC at least. Uh, and love me some Doctor Who, man, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they're, they're making a GTA 5 documentary, which I think is interesting, but it's... Um, it's I don't know I'm not I'm not sure if I'm sold on the idea yet now that they've got a, a an incentive at the moment called a make it digital campaign and they're basically them and along with all of the banks in the UK they seem to be trying to get kids at a very young age involved in programming and understanding technical and IT skills now this is this is something they did 30 years ago as well yes yes but uh, at the moment it's important now i've also found out recently that australia is also in a a, a demand for uh, for sh you know shortage of it skills so they're they're incentivizing people to to move over there to to what's it called migrate or whatever you call it emigrate okay. that's it not migrate we're not birds um so yeah i i think that the reason for this make it digital campaign is that we do have a apparently have a skill shortage in in the uk for, for it's i i didn't know that i i I mean, I don't struggle to. I'm an IT professional, but I don't struggle to find work. I don't know. Maybe it's because of the circles I'm in, personally. I, but I don't. I also don't find it particularly easy either. You know, it's not like there's loads and loads of jobs around. I work for a, a large international company, and we really struggle to find people who are decent at the jobs that we want them to be decent at. Now I now you know what. Now you said that a lot of the clients that I have, I'm a contractor. Right, and I'm fairly highly skilled in what I do, and the people that they want permanently employed, they want to be my caliber or better. If you if you know what I mean, mm. I'm not talking. I'm not not sitting here to try and promote myself or anything like that. I'm just saying that generally, quite a lot of permanent employees don't have the skills that these people are looking for. People who are of the permanent mindset of I, I need a job. You know, I need to go and uh, whereas. Where we're with contractors, we have to work at it. We have to work at keeping up to date with skills, and we've got more passion, I, su I suppose, for um, for keeping up to date with the latest technologies, the latest frameworks, the latest releases, and that kind of thing. Whereas with permanent employees, they tend to get complacent and they tend to get to a point where they they're just working for a living. I I've, mm. I've seen it time and time and time again. Even the place I'm currently working, there's there's people there that are like that, and it's a bit it's a bit discouraging, really. I think. It's nice to it's nice to talk to people like you two who are who are into what you do, you know. And I don't know what you do for a living, uh, Drew, but I, I I know that your Anuk thing is you know your life. It's interesting and it's what you enjoy doing. Is this documentary actually about Grand Theft Auto Five? I'm looking at the article. It seems to suggest it's the original Grand Theft Auto. Oh, it could be. Could it well could be? I haven't I haven't delved into it in a great amount of detail, but I do know that it's about the making of. It's not about the game. It's about mm, the how right. how we came up with this idea. Where, why there's lots of gangs involved. Why there's we decided to go down the the, the ultra violence route, and why there's hookers in the game. You know that kind of thing. It's it's all the oh, yeah. All, all the stuff if you're talking that's about the original, it's also why you get a bonus for running over Harry Krishnas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, um, we all used to enjoy doing that, but when you think about it, it it's a bit wrong, isn't it? It's a it, bit wrong. Just a bit, yeah. Um. So yeah, I think um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that there is a shortage. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I think that said in permanent work, I think there is, but I still think the UK tends to be moving more towards a self-employment regime at the moment. You know, there seems to be more people who are going down that route. But I think in America. I think you guys are generally quite self, you know, that generally it's a self-employment culture, isn't it? You all do your own that's, tax returns and... <laughs> that's what they want you to think. Uh, uh, but honestly, uh, and, and it's one of the big things, in, and we will not get into the political here because yeah, yeah, that, that's a whole, whole debate. But, you know, we only recently have, you know, this, you know, nationwide health care. Now, that's not health care that everybody has. It's everybody can sign up for and pay for. 
So it's actually, that's the first step we've made towards people being able to do self-employment. Because up until now, if you wanted, you know, healthcare, you needed to get it through an employer or, you know, a, a third party company. And those third party companies were like, oh, you're desperate for, for you know, healthcare. So we're going to jack the price up. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you have, you know, prior conditions, you have anything, you know, any problems already, we're not going to cover you. Or we're going to charge you an arm and a leg. Yeah, to make yeah. sure you can keep your arm and your leg. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it's just, you know, so uh, that, that said, um, we, we have an abundance of people. Um, who, especially the IT industry, um, they, I mean, we have tons of people that are being told, oh yeah, you can totally get a, a degree in, in IT and it'll work out terrifically for you. Problem is, and it's the same kind of thing, a lot of companies now are looking for um, people who have more experience beyond just, oh, they got the degree, they got the certification, they need experience. But there's no way to get that because every entry level job requires you know all this extra stuff um, and at least for the US a, a big problem of that is the baby boom uh, mm. which I don't know if you guys use the term over there yeah. post-world war two yeah um, and so there's a lot of these higher echelon positions that are all full and then they filled in the lower echelon positions and then lower still and like I'm working at an entry-level position in sales administration uh, doing contract work, basically uh, making contracts, not working on a contract. Right. Um, and I'm working with people who, you know, are my mother's age, hmm. you know, at the at the same position, and they're getting paid roughly what I am, and you know, obviously some more because they've been there longer and stuff like that. But and it's not that they don't have a passion and desire to move up. There's just no place to move up to, you know, uh, in my specific department. You have my boss, you have her boss, you have the CEO of the company, and this yeah. is an international, you know, international company because we actually do have offices out there in the UK and you know Canada and stuff like that. And it's it's a big company now. It's kind of niche and stuff like that, but like there's not many places to go up. It's not like you can move up continually. So all our particular companies, like if you want to get a supervisory position, you better hope that we buy up another company or that we, you know, start doing more business. So we need to take one region and split it into two and, you know, stuff like that. And we need to make a position. There's no moving up. You you move into that new vacant position. Um, and so, yeah, for, for IT, I mean, same situation. Yeah, yeah. you can be an IT guy, but... You know, okay, you want to be a supervisor? Cool. You need to basically wait for the old supervisor to move up or die. <laughs> and then you've got to fight for the position when it does come. Right, up. with yeah. eight other you know guys. Yeah. I don't think it's too dissimilar here. I have to be honest with you. I think it's uh, it's similar kind of thing anyway. But I said we don't really want to get too far into the the politics, and it's not really particularly about gaming. It's just that it came up that when I was reading the article it, 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 about the GTA documentary it went into all this other detail about this is why this is happening this is the incentive that's happening the bbc are kind of involved in it and it, i think it was just interesting to bring up as a you know as a general point i think um i think we'll we'll move on to games again and to and to <laughs> things it's uh, it can get quite dry that we're not a political show are we um, no, so, um two hours five minutes <clears throat> here as well yes i know i know i am very aware that's why i'm trying to rush through the last few points uh, Harmonix, uh, which are the people involved uh, in producing Rock Band, uh, want song requests for Rock Band 4, which uh, I, it's like, you know, apart from everybody shouting sweet child of mine at them, I think, uh, have, are, we, are we over rhythm games now? That's the point. I think I've between cannot... all of these games, surely they must have got every single tune that everyone could possibly want in a game now. Well, here's the big thing, and I actually, they actually sent me the survey. <laughs> Um, to, you know, what do you want from Rock Band 4? Because for a lot of people, remember, this came out and it was on, you know, it, the start of the PS3 and the 360, and then the bubble burst and the rhythm games kind of died, and now we're into the PS4, and even if, if they haven't started stuff already, which I based on the survey, they might not have even started development, then we're not going to see stuff 
actually come out for Rock Band 4 until a year or two from now. I mean, I'm sure some of the stuff they're going to be able to port right over from the old stuff. You know, they've got mm. the engine and stuff like that. Um, but I, I honestly think they're looking to see, do, do people want the, the Rock stuff? Or do they want a more um, eccentric selection of music? Um, you know, you've got uh, Gundam oh. Style. You've got, you know, uh, it's, it's all not... these other, you know, internet classic type songs. I'm, I, as, a, as a, a, a fellow, well, someone who used to be a muso, I'm not necessarily that into music these days, but I, I used to be really into album tracks and you know the more obscure albums and things that you would never get on these rock bands and then they mm. started releasing stuff on the store uh, and and they had more interesting things on there and they had less less and less popular stuff that you could buy or you could opt into and then you know play with your friends or play with your you know like my, my, i was into metal still i'm into metal sorry but you know i was specifically into certain bands around around that time and uh it was nice that you could download them, but I don't know. I just think the whole rhythm game thing's a bit dead now. I think it's. I think we've we've done with it, and it's. It was all about. We, we've been talking about local multiplayer stuff on this show a number of times, and those games are inherently local multiplayer. Right. Playing them, you can play them online with people. I'm sure you mm -hmm. could even play them online with with cameras and stuff now these days. But it's not the same, is it? You know, you're not right. No, because you have to be and, right you know. there, right next to the guy and stuff like that. And I mean, that's how I never even played the games. I just had my friends invade to play my roommates. You know, PS3. They all set up, and I I'd, I'd emerge from the you know from my bedroom, and you know they're all singing and yelling and drinking beer, and I can. All right, move over, sit down, smack dab in the middle of the couch. You know, drums over here, guitar over here, singer behind me. I'm just, all right, entertain me. Yeah. You know, and I never even played the games. You know? I, I had so, a lot yeah, of fun playing them. It's all about the local. I had a lot of fun playing them, but I wouldn't have had any fun if I played them online. But the the way that the world is moving now is, I mean, we, we're all PC gamers, so we've always been in the state where we've always played games on our own with friends online, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And we've also always had the local multiplayer stuff from years ago and LAN parties and all the other stuff that we do. But that, 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 now, I don't know, it's, 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 we seem to have got bored of it. We seem to have got bored of the local multiplayer. Lou, um, Stee, and I had a LAN party a few weeks ago, and we played Nidhogg, um, mm -hmm. and it, it was more fun than I've had playing a game for. It's such a simple concept, such a simple thing, but we had more fun playing that game together than we, and we played hours and hours and hours and hours of it, just because just, just we were getting, and, and, back, and you know, hour five, we were still as excited about it as we were in hour one. And it just shows that the local multiplayer aspect of it, if you get a good game like Worms or something that's, you know, something that's fun and has a bit of competition that's, you know, that's, healthy i think you know you can get you can get mm. too too uh, addicted to it but I, I i just think i think we miss that i i miss that personally i was talking about this sort of thing with my <coughs> girlfriend the other day and and it, it, anything that you can do with friends is more fun like if you right. share a meal with your friend it's mm. better than just eating it on your own there's something there's something joyous about sh like a shared in the person experience and it's something that Online kind of does, but doesn't quite get it right. It's not as good. But the the problem is, is the world is going that way. It is, mm -hmm. going, and, and I'm not saying this is an old man, and I'm you know I've wanted, I'm sick of it. It wasn't like it was, this in my day. but I don't think it is anymore. I think I think there there is a return of local multiplayer and, and of of shared I think, experience I, games. I, I think in general, I'm talking about I'm talking about tablets, social networking, mm. that kind of thing. It's it's becoming very much, and there's all kinds of new technologies that are coming out on a daily basis or a weekly basis that are that are even more concerned with uh, the like get yourself online. You know, I, I, I watched um, Chappie the other day, that um, new Blomkamp film. Yeah, mm. and have you seen it? I haven't seen Not it yet. yet. Okay, I won't spoil it for you because I really enjoyed it. It had a lot of criticism, <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought it had some. As is, as with like District Nine, etc. It's got very good ideas in it. Some of the executions a bit, you know, but I like the ideas in it. And there's one particular idea in that that I think we're not too far off, you know. And I love that kind of, you know, near future thinking. And that, it's scary to think that some of these things could happen in our in our lifetime. 
Um, I'm not. I, I'm not going to even talk about it anymore because I can't do it without spoiling it, and it's a bit. It's a bit. Annoying, Don't spoil it. Yeah, I shall not. No spoilers, please. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on to uh, to the next uh, the next story. We've only got a couple more stories left, guys, before we we close the day. So the uh, 3DS, the new 3DS, has uh, outsold the Xbox One and the PS4 in February sales. Now, that's w- not that surprising. I was just going to say, yeah, are we surprised about that? Is it news anymore? No, no I mean the 3DS is great, but uh, well. Uh, it, you can't compare them because the no. PS4, you buy one PS4 for the entire house. 3DS, you buy one for the kids to share and one for mom and one for dad. You know, uh, you know, or a four, or you know, however, every person gets an individual one, and the price is right for, to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, so of course it's going to outsell. Now you tell me that it made more revenue than Xbox One and PS4, then I might be actually more, mm, you know, it's intrigued. A, but it's a very clever way of wording it. Actually, I never really think about it that way. Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, my my buddy Wrong Gear, uh, he and I, we actually should start our own podcast. We do the most of the same thing. Uh, but we brought up um, uh, what was it? Uh, Call of Duty. The last Call of Duty came out, and they said that they had uh, what was it? Um, I can't remember the term they used, but basically they said, "Oh well, we put, we sold air quote more copies of um, this Call of Duty than any other previously. We set a new record. We grew, and then the numbers came out. And well, yes, they sent that they sent out more copies to stores to retailers than ever before, and retailers bought them up. But the actual." to the user sales were down like 60% mm. compared to the year previous. And every time I see, you know, things, it's it, to me, it's just clickbait. It's like, give it me is, yeah. actual numbers, you know. Uh, but I mean, also not too surprised, Xbox One and PS4 have been out for a while. This is a brand new co- you know, handheld. But there's you also, know, you, yeah, I, yeah, you're right. And, and there's also the Nintendo versus versus all other consoles right. argument, which is always the case. Again, Nintendo are uh, family-friendly. As you said, every family kind of wants one to an extent. Well, not every family, but a lot of families, America, Japanese, uh, in America and Japan specifically, really want these these consoles so they can all play them together. Whereas, arguably, the P- the PlayStation and the, the Xbox are m- more serious for more serious gamers. Although that is kind of... I think that's levelling out now. I think the casual gamers or people who are just into certain types of games such as the destinies and the the cods and uh, the fifas of the world they're you know that they're, they're kind of leveling out and we're not I'm, I'm not spending any time on my consoles these days not really i, no, I, I bought a ps4 it's great for got, watching youtube i've got ground zeros on it that's it <laughs> i've, got, I've got ground zeros on my on on that and that's it um Right, I'll just quickly mention Resd as well, kind of an honourable mention. Uh, Resd is the EGX in the UK, or one of the EGXs in the UK. It's a bit smaller scale than a lot of the other EGXs. Um, it's mainly focused on, I think, indies and, you know, the kind of more... Uh, I suppose it's more than just indies, but it is, it's It's quite low-key. Um, I just wanted to give it a quick mention, and I'll paste a thing in chat. The on very lastly as well, or second to last rather, Nvidia Titan X benchmarks have come out. Yeah, I'm. I, I've. I've Are you not, buying one? <laughs> well, you know what? I looked at the prices. I looked at the prices of the Titan Z, which is the last generation, I think. And those are about thousand dollars, aren't they? Twelve hundred quid, twelve hundred pounds. Uh, it's probably going to be twelve hundred dollars as well. We tend to get the same prices, right. even though the yeah. conversion rate's different. Change well, the symbol. The, it's out of stock in in our, all our local mm-hmm. areas. Now I've found one that's in stock, but it's an open box. They've been using it as obviously some kind of display model. It's probably been in a PC or something, uh, and it's an extra thousand pounds to get it as well. The Titan Z, that is, not the X. Um, but anyway, the Titan X benchmarks have come in. I'm so close to buying a new graphics card, and I'm looking at all of them, and I'm like. Don't should buy I, a Titan for Christ. Should then. I go for the best? But is it worth it? You know, am I going to get no. the kick that I need from it? No. I don't even need a new graphics card. I've got to be honest right. with you. My 680 is fine. It's just that I'm I'm a gear slut. Buy, buy a 970. <laughs> yep. You'll be able to run 1080p. Fine. You only need these if you're running 4K. And even well, then, I'm considering it, and I'm also considering running extra monitors because I'm because of the streaming thing. Uh, there's a lot. You of... won't need a Titan for that. No, but well, yeah. stop it, I mean, I've I've got a. a... 7870 
I've got two monitors. I stream just fine. It's just fine. Spending a thousand dollars, just a thousand, not even a thousand two hundred. That isn't it. A thousand dollars. That hmm? isn't it, because I'd, I'd have to upgrade my monitors as well because I don't have the relevant inputs on these monitors, so I'd be spending at least £2,600 on a new like 4K rig as well, if I went 4K, of course, right. with all my monitors. But that's, that's yeah, just so me being an idiot. <laughs> you know? No, I've got... Uh, I, I've sweet-talked my wife for, for Christmas. She got a brand-new desktop. It's over there. Uh, and we built that together. It's her first one that she's built herself. Uh, I love her to death. She's a giant nerd and lets me get to be a giant nerd too. And then I was like, that's cool. That's 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 Christmas for us. Next next Christmas? Mm. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing some upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be a Titan new no way? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I said I'm, I think at the most I'll go for a six, uh, sorry, a 980 at the most if I, if I push it. But even that, it, it, the, the price bump is... Is atrocious, isn't it? But you do get it from enthusiasts, you know, and, uh, and I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> right, so the last thing I want to mention, uh, again, I don't even know, this isn't very relevant to you, uh, uh, Drew, but it, it's, we, we've, I've just found out this week that we have 152 megabyte broadband available in the UK now. Megabit. Megabit, megabyte, whatever, same thing. Now, I'm on 100 meg as it stands. Um, we've got, I think it's a six meg upload though, so I've got 100, 100 meg down, six meg up. It's ridiculous. And then after a certain amount of time, like after this stream, for example, I'll get capped uh, on Virgin Media. So I'll be, I'll be capped, and I'll be at fifty percent of my upload. So I'll be at three meg upload. Oh dear, my heart bleeds. Man. But no, what I'm saying is that's, <laughs> that's you know, six that's times case. faster than my original broadband. But uh, yeah, but my original broadband was five twelve k for God's sake. But 152 yeah. megabit. I've, I, I didn't even I didn't even know it existed. Let alone was it, it seems to be coming out every few months. They're, they're upgrading us, and I don't know what it's like for you in in the US, Drew. I know you don't have us. You used to be miles ahead of us. You used to yeah. be like years ahead of us. But then then we've caught up and we've just completely. Yeah. What do you What do you have? Well, I know you've got the the problem with. Um, I think it's more patchy over there, isn't it? There's a there's a there's a lot more variance in the speed and the quality of the connection you're getting. Uh, yeah, because you know we, all our stuff is through you know third parties. You know, uh, they actually the FCC just just mm. uh, declared that it's a public utility, so some of that stuff is going to have to go away. They also just adjusted the um, uh, definition of broadband. So DSL um, is out, um, which is really nice uh, because a lot of, but basically there's not any competition. Mm. Uh, we, you know, so basically if you want, you know, cable internet, broadband internet in Houston, for instance, where I'm at, you have one choice. You have you have Comcast. That's it. That's all mm. you got. Uh, now Google's changing that up with Google Fiber, uh, and because of that, uh, some companies are getting into fiber again. Uh, the existing fiber companies are starting to spread as quick as they can uh, because they're like, oh crap, <laughs> we better do this now. Uh, but yeah, we actually just recently, uh, we were paying for uh, 40 or 50 uh, megabit. And That's more than they, I thought you were getting over there, I have to be oh, honest. Oh yeah, but it, it really depends on where you're at. We're in a major city, so it's not a big deal, but smaller cities probably wouldn't be as high. But they were giving us 40, 50, and then... Uh, Two three weeks ago, they oh maybe actually two three months ago. Now that I think about it, we got a little letter in the mail. Hey, we're doubling your speed for free. We love you. And it's like mm -hmm, because mm. Google Fiber is coming. Um, I'm in Houston, um, and we don't have Google Fiber coming yet. But Dallas and Austin, uh, we, who are both about two hours away, two to three hours, they they have Google. Uh, Austin has Google Fiber. Dallas is getting Google Fiber soon. So they're coming this way. So every company is freaking out. And the best part is you're talking about, we were leading the charge and we wanted to keep leading the charge. So our government said, here's, I can't remember, I think it's like $2 billion that we're going to give out to all these different companies to make sure that fiber optic is everywhere in the U.S. You know what the, the companies did? They sat on it. Yeah, I was going to say nothing. Yeah. They did absolutely nothing. And they were, basically, it was, it was a big, big flub up and... Uh, yeah, the money just didn't go in. It went into their own pocketbooks, and they did infrastructure. That's what they said they did. They did infrastructure, but none of it was fiber-related. Uh, basically, nobody wanted to move into fiber because it means replacing old lines and all that stuff. So and we've got we've got quite a lot of stuff going on in the UK at the moment. With uh, I mean, 
we have a lot more choice. I mean, there's at least five or six providers that I can choose from where I am. The one that I'm on happens to be my preference because it's the fastest, not the most reliable or the best at times, but the you know in terms of it's the best deal I think for for what I'm for what I'm on. I've never had a problem with them, put it that way. But um, they're also doing a lot of incentives. Like there's a, there's TV adverts on all the time for the government sponsor sponsoring super fast broadband as well now, and I don't really know how that's fitting in. I I, I didn't know where it came from, but I, yeah, it seems to be that the, the governments are finally starting to pay attention. Not just the government, though. That you know, that as you said, the uh, the corporations and the the companies across each of these these countries. But anyway, yes, let's. Uh, <laughs> I think I think I've, I'm done talking. I've got a very dry uh -huh. mouth. Um, so yes, uh, thank you very much for coming on, Drew. And Absolutely. thank Everybody you for talking about Anuk. Anuk, I said we will definitely be getting on it. Very and, interested. Yeah, yeah very uh, interested indeed. Probably have a, a good old look at that soon. And um, I, I said I may even get my my game thing on there. At least start something up potentially. Hey, you know who to contact. I do, I do, and I've had you on. <laughs> I've had you on Skype for ages as Never, well. Forever, forever. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I'm. I, it's oh, just I'm good. busy. It's just I'm a busy guy. I can't Everybody's help it. Everybody's busy. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, I'll I'll give you this last opportunity to pimp a nook and tell the people who haven't heard if there's anybody anybody new what it is and what you're about. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sign up for nook.com. Uh, that's the website, anook.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. We're actually getting the Facebook up and running again soon, so uh, we are going to be pimping our users' videos. Um, I mean, that's that's actually what we use our Twitter and Facebook for primarily, is pimping our users' content. So you make stuff, we, we want to show it off. We like showing stuff off. Uh, because we don't make it, you make it, so, you know, somebody should do it for you. Uh, that's our thought, at least. Um, but, uh, you know, come by, sign up, hang out, uh, meet new people. Uh, you know, the story I always like to tell people, and it sounds creepy, but met a dude online uh, on Anook. I was giving away a Borderlands 2 mouse uh, for kind of promote Anook and stuff like that. And he, you know, signed up and I noticed, oh, hey, you live in Katy. That's kind of near Houston, right? Yeah, it is. Ended up playing Borderlands 2 together. Um, then... He needed a job, so I recommended my day job, and then he moved into the apartment complex near me. So yeah, I looked at <laughs> really weird things on occasion. Yeah, that's a bit um, weird. <laughs> you know, I've got uh, I've got other people that I know uh, up in Seattle actually, uh, who basically they they live near each other, and they're both gigantic gamers, and they never would have known. And now they're doing cross promotion stuff. They're trying to work out like um, a Pacific Northwest conference little like get together kind of land party kind of thing. Why? Because they found out that they live near each other because of a nook. You know, all these people, you find people on a nook, you know, where Twitter is always going to suggest people based on content and who follows who. With a nook, you know, it's going to be the games that you're playing and what you're doing and stuff like that uh, that actually gives you an opportunity to actually meet people um, outside of just, you know, 140 character snippets, you know, that Twitter would do. So, yeah, sign up for a nook, hang out, come meet us. We're nice people. Naughty in uh, in hitbox chat has just said uh, one day someone will get married on a nook. Yeah, yeah. Sure and Naughty actually, I, you know, talking about pimpage. Uh, Naughty's uh, old school member. He's been around since God knows, probably about as long as I have. Uh, helps with our art department and stuff like that. So um, it is a big communal effort. Uh, that's the that's the last thing I'll mention. Uh, nobody's paid right now. There's no ads. There's no money. Uh, so it, it's guys like Naughty uh, Edge. Rinzi, uh, Aloha, just all these people who moderate games, who create content to, uh, to to make the game pages and stuff like that. And we literally exist because of the community. And if they weren't here, we wouldn't be here. And literally, in, in the literal sense and the figurative, you know, if they mm. didn't want to be here, there's no reason for us. But because they want to be here and because they want to help out, we're actually still up and running and doing stuff. Uh, because we have a developer and we have a community manager and that's about it on permanent staff. Mm. So uh, without the community, we'd be sunk. So It's a very cool, yeah, very yeah. professional looking effort for yeah. the, the very small, small team that you've got. It looks very big. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we're, we're quite proud of it. And uh, hey, uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday, tomorrow, should have a new update coming out. What, for the website? Mm -hmm, for the site, cool. yep. Good so, stuff. Uh, check that out. Yeah, if you, if you don't sign up today, that's cool. Sign up tomorrow when that day comes out. 
Good stuff. Well, um, thank you very much for coming on, and I shall close the show. So if any of you are new to watching us and you're interested, you can follow us on our brand new website that we got up last week, which is www.resonancearcade.com. That has got all of our social links and all of our previous shows on there, including our Twitter feed, etc., etc. It's just kind of an amalgamation of everything we do. Uh, we will probably, at some point, integrate a nook into that by the sounds of it. I think, uh, I think we can. Um, obviously, we're on YouTube, forward slash Resonance Arcade. Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade, and uh, Facebook, forward slash Resonance Arcade as well. And we stream every Wednesday at 7.30pm. Please follow us if you're interested in talk shows. Uh, we do try and mix it up a little bit. We have got guests on for the next month or so. Um, we also do a Metal Gear Solid stream, which is not happening right now, but we are hopefully finishing that off as soon as in the next few weeks. Just keep your eye on us. And... Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for, for watching, and uh, we shall catch you next Wednesday. See you later. See you later. Adios, folks.